The story takes place at Charrington Academy, an environment where carnivores and herbivores cohabit. Against this backdrop, the murder of Tem, a male member of the drama community, by a carnivorous individual takes place. The news of his death has caused a tense atmosphere among the students, some of whom speculate that the alleged killer may be someone who shares classrooms with them. Among the theories, suspicion arises about the Grey Wolf, who is part of the drama club. Later in the day, on the premises of the drama club, two herbivorous animals discuss the incident involving Tem. In this context, one of them raises the question of who will take Tem's place in the next play that will debut in two weeks' time. On the other hand, the other individual holds the view that, as a show of respect for Tem's memory, he should consider not appearing in the play. In the costume area walks Lagoshi, a grey wolf who plays a backstage role and stands as the protagonist of the story. Later, when Lagoshi leaves to attend to the stage lights, some of the herbivorous animals perceive a change in the way they observe them. This is due to the widespread belief among them that Lagoshi is the prime suspect in connection with Tem's death. A few moments later, a pelican known as Sanu, who holds the position of director of the drama club, appears in the auditorium of the academy. Upon entering, Sanu expresses his desire to address with his team the issue of the murder that occurred the previous day, only to be met with a clear division among the members. The herbivores hold the belief that the murderer is from their group, while the carnivores consider the possibility that someone among them is jealous of Tem. At this point, a small squirrel seeks out Lagoshi to ask for his help in cracking open a nut, but is unable to find him. Hearing this, a goat named Els is surprised not to find Lagoshi in the auditorium and questions his parade. Meanwhile, Lagoshi continues his work behind the stage lights. After rehearsals end, during the night, Els strikes up a conversation with a lemur about her fear of Lagoshi. The lemur invites her to his home to keep her from feeling lonely, but despite the offer, Els decides to stay at the academy residence. Soon after, Els senses that she is being watched and realizes that Lagoshi is watching her. She asks him to move away and questions whether he sees her as prey, but Lagoshi does not respond. At this point, Els pulls out a pair of scissors in an attempt to protect herself, but Lagoshi takes them from her and instead hands her a letter from Tem. Afterwards, the two animals sit on a bench in the street, where Lagoshi explains that Tem was in love with Els and that he tried to deliver the letter to him several times without success. Therefore, he decided to do it instead. After reading the letter, Els thanks Lagoshi and apologizes for mistrusting him. Lagoshi responds by mentioning that he is used to being feared and hated by others because he is a wolf. After expressing this, Lagoshi disdains Els and walks away. The next day at school, Lagoshi is on his knees in front of a sort of tomb set up for Tem, deep in thought about his friend. Suddenly, some of the academy students burst in with excited shouts when they spot Ruiz, a third-year deer and leading actor in the drama club, who aspires to become a B-star. Ruiz gracefully moves among the girls and joins in the commemoration, handing flowers to Tem, while Lagoshi observes him, immediately identifying him. Afterwards, Ruiz asks Lagoshi why he is looking at him, and Lagoshi realizes that his presence makes him uncomfortable, averting his gaze. Meanwhile, in one of the school gardens, Haru, a small-sized rabbit, is busy watering the flowers when she is suddenly startled to see some books fall. Looking up, she discovers that two girls are teasing her, which makes her sad about the state of the flowers. The girls immediately throw a mattress at her and ask her to take it to another room. After picking up everything the girls threw, Haru drags the mattress away, at which point an anteater offers to help her. However, when she looks at it, a horse standing next to it tells her that it will not assist her, to which Haru replies that she can handle it on her own. Upon entering her room, Haru finds Sally, the squirrel with whom she shares the space, and invites her to eat, but Sally declines the offer. Before Haru leaves, Sally comments that the girls who bother her have valid reasons to be angry with her. Later, during lunchtime in the canteen, Haru tries to join the tables, but is not allowed to join the others. Faced with this situation, she decides to sit alone in a secluded spot behind the school, where three girls come to bother her. One of them, Mizuchi, a harlequin rabbit, is responsible for the fact that no one wants to associate with Haru because of an incident in which she kissed her boyfriend. As the girls get closer, Mizuchi continues to host Haru, who chooses to withdraw to avoid complications. Before leaving, Mizuchi pushes her, causing her to fall to the ground, and throws a bucket of water on her, berating her that she and her boyfriend are of a different race than Haru, and that she has ruined a purebred relationship. In addition, Mizuchi threatens to tell everyone that Haru is dating male animals as revenge for her actions. Shortly afterwards, at the theater club premises, Ruiz asks Lagoshi for help with the scene of Zoe, 
a male goat who is replacing Tem in the play. However, Zoe has not yet learned the dialogue, as she has eaten it. Realizing this, Ruiz reprimands her for not being the right time to eat paper, and Zoe assures him that she will learn the lines. At this point, Kai, a male mongoose, appears, visibly upset by the choice to cast Zoe, arguing that he should have got the role of Tem as he was the one who auditioned for the role first. Ruiz asks Kai to knock before entering, and then urges Zoe to learn her lines and leave. After Zoe leaves, Kai tries to convince Lagoshi to leave as well, but Ruiz asks him to stay. Later, he asks Kai to get along with Lagoshi, as he will help him with stage work, explaining that it was a decision by the leadership to exclude him from the acting team to assist with public relations and stage crew. Despite his discontent, Kai quietly accepts the situation. At that moment, a teacher approaches the dressing room and discovers some girls listening behind the door. Ruiz explains to Kai that the decision was based on previous mistakes he made in school activities and questions why he thought he would take the role of Tem. Prompted by this, Kai attempts to assault Ruiz, but Lagoshi intervenes to protect him emphasizing the importance of saving the actors. Although Kai is reluctant, Lagoshi insists, highlighting Ruiz as the lead actor. In an attempt to defuse the situation, Lagoshi bares his fangs, causing Kai to calm down. After this altercation, Kai angrily leaves, shouting at the girls to let him out as he opens the door. When they are left alone, Ruiz tells Lagoshi that he has never seen him act violently towards another boy before. This experience makes Lagoshi uncomfortable, and as he tries to leave, Ruiz stops him by grabbing his tail and asks him to help him rehearse with Zoe for the night. Despite Lagoshi's reluctance, Ruiz insists and assures him that he will stand guard at the entrance to the auditorium to avoid trouble. At that moment, Haru is stuck in the bathroom, drying her clothes, and when she thinks she is ready, she gets dressed and comes out. Afterwards, she washes her hands and reflects on her height, noting that boys tend to approach her to protect her because of her smallness. However, Haru also recognizes that, upon meeting her, they take advantage of her and abandon her, experiencing her whole life serving boys of other species. After these reflections, Haru leaves the bath and realizes that it is already dark, deciding to head home. On his way, as he passes a fountain near the auditorium, where Lagoshi is on duty, he catches her scent. This triggers a transformation in Lagoshi, awakening his predatory instincts. Upon noticing Lagoshi, Haru runs in an attempt to escape, but Lagoshi catches up with her by jumping on her and captures her. Waking up the next day, Lagoshi lies in his bed thinking he doesn't feel like getting up, but is interrupted by Kalat, an English shepherd, who drags him across the room to wake him up. Meanwhile, a fox asks him about his maths test preparation, and his friend Jack, a Labrador retriever, notices that Lagoshi is acting differently. After looking in the mirror, Lagoshi recalls the events of the previous night, when he captured Haru. During an internal struggle between his predatory instinct and the tenderness he felt for the little doe, Lagoshi inadvertently injures Haru's arm. The presence of Zoe, who called out to him in concern, distracted Lagoshi, allowing Haru to escape. Later, Lagoshi goes to investigate an incident and discovers that Ruiz fell off the stage and hurt his leg. Ruiz asks for help to get up and assures Zoe that her injury will heal soon. Afterwards, Ruiz asks Lagoshi if everything is alright outside the auditorium, and Lagoshi, while cleaning his claws, nods. Despite his disturbing thoughts, Lagoshi goes to the bathroom before leaving the school, fighting his wild instincts. Remembering what happened, Lagoshi joins his classmates at school. In the dining hall, a hyena asks about the breakfast for carnivores that day, and Lagoshi explains that meat consumption has been criminalized in the academy and the city. Menus are designed to be tasty and nutritious, avoiding meat. As they eat, a classmate mentions the importance of wearing glasses, but Lagoshi is distracted by guilt from the night before and has no appetite. Suddenly, two foxes start fighting, and Lagoshi, registering his own predatory instincts, yells at them to stop, startling everyone. One of the foxes approaches to fight Lagoshi, but he refuses and assesses his options and possible excuses for escape. Ruiz intervenes to distract the fox, but he remains angry, expressing his desire to become a B-star to lead the school. Ruiz urges him to reflect before judging others. At that, another fox asks his friend to stop fighting, and the conflict is momentarily resolved. Ruiz asks the students to return to their places and thanks Lagoshi, indicating that he is settling his debt from the previous day. Lagoshi rejects the idea of owing anything and thanks Ruiz. Ruiz, observing the situation, thinks that Lagoshi may have pretended to lose the fight to maintain his reputation. Ruiz comments to Lagoshi that he is a more dangerous wolf than he thought, trying to pretend to be something he is not. 
At these words, Legoshi is silent, not knowing what to think about himself. Later, during play practice, Sanu notices that Ruiz seems to be a little slow and asks him if he is well. Ruiz replies that he is fine and that this is not the time to worry about his health, but about the drama club. He continues to rehearse with the others, urging them to think about their characters and improve their performances. At the same time, Legoshi's team works on revising and repairing the costumes, while Kai expresses his discontent at being backstage. After his complaints, an ostrich compliments him on his costume-making skills, and when Kai asks him if he really thinks so, the ostrich admits that he doesn't, and they both laugh. At that point, Legoshi finds Tem's wardrobe and consults with the others about what to do with it, but they have no clear answer. Legoshi then reflects on the silence surrounding the incident with Tem, considering it a serious crime. He recalls Ruiz's behavior and thinks that Ruiz feels responsible for what happened, trying hard despite having hurt his leg. Suddenly, his thoughts are interrupted by the ostrich, who assigns him a task to go to the garden club to pick the flowers needed for the final scene. Legoshi finds this somewhat difficult, as the gardening club is composed of herbivores, while he is a carnivore. However, his companions suggest that he needs to make more friends and see this as an opportunity. Although Legoshi accepts the task, he makes it a condition that one of them accompanies him, and the anteater named Kibai offers to accompany him. Arriving at the door of the garden club, Legoshi notices the presence of the rabbit from the previous night. As he analyzes her, Haru asks them what they need. Legoshi contemplates what excuse he could give to avoid the situation, but Kibai runs away first. Having heard the rumors about Haru, Kibai tells Legoshi that he will make it up to him another time and walks away, leaving him alone. Legoshi feels bad about being left alone and hears Haru comment that the antil ran away from her. Haru then looks at him and asks if he is any different, to which he quietly replies that he is not and that he has no right to look at her, talk to her, let alone be afraid of her, because of his attempt to eat her earlier. After a while, Haru studies the plans Legoshi brings to select the best varieties and invites him to choose with her. Legoshi explains that the flowers are to decorate a scene in the drama club and during the conversation, he realizes that Haru is a very small rabbit and has never spoken to someone so small before. At this point, Haru tells Legoshi that before giving her the flowers, he needs to earn them, so she asks him to help her in the garden. He agrees, and she tells him that when her teacher graduated, she was left to take care of the club alone. Legoshi comments that it must be difficult to take care of so many plants on her own. Haru nods, but points out that the plants need her and she needs them. She thinks it is better to help each other and not be stubborn or mean to avoid dangerous situations. At that moment, Legoshi looks at Haru's arm and remembers what happened the night before. Somewhat suspiciously, he approaches Haru to ask about her arm, and she replies that she doesn't remember, but it hurts a lot. After watching her walk to look at other plants, Legoshi reflects on his feelings for her, feeling that he can't stop looking at her. After finishing his work, Haru tells Legoshi that he would like to invite him to lunch as a thank you for his help. At this point, Legoshi reflects that he is not hungry, but he doesn't want to leave either, he just wants to talk to her some more. However, he is concerned about how to express this without her misunderstanding his intentions, so he tries to put himself in the perspective of a rabbit. Observing her behavior, Haru interprets that Legoshi is looking for the same thing as other males, so he closes the window and takes off his uniform. This gesture surprises Legoshi, and she expresses her desire to have a good time, albeit in a somewhat audacious way. During that afternoon, Kibai notices another animal's hair on the rabbit's uniform and asks him about it. The rabbit tells him that he went out with Haru the day before, prompting Kibai to ask about his supposedly terrifying girlfriend. Despite the question, the harlequin rabbit is still excited, describing Haru as a friendly, cute and sexy rabbit. At that moment, a male goat next to Kibai recognizes who the rabbit is referring to and asks if he is talking about Haru from the garden club. The rabbit asks if he knows her, and the goat talks about her as if he knows her well. Hearing this, the rabbit understands that the goat also had an encounter with Haru and the latter comments that she is a very fierce girl. Kibai, processing this information, decides to return to save his wolf companion from Haru. At the same time, Haru approaches Legoshi to help him get out of his uniform but he is frightened and disdains her. Before leaving, he puts up a sheet to protect her from the cold and insect bites. Observing this gesture, Haru thinks she may have misunderstood Legoshi and feels sorry for making him run away. This causes her to laugh heartily. At that precise moment, Legoshi runs down the stairs, bewildered by what he is experiencing, and runs into Kibai. Noticing Legoshi's frightened expression, Kibai asks him if something happened, to which Legoshi replies no, 
although Kibai persists, and points out that he saw him running very fast. After calming down a bit, Lagoshi probes Kibai about what he means by something, and Kibai explains the rumors circulating about Haru. Finally, he comments that she seems to be considered one of the problem girls at the academy for dating a lot of male animals. Afterwards, Kibai asks Lagoshi if he found the roses, to which Lagoshi suggests discussing it with the others to avoid looking for them there, and leaves. As he walks, he reflects that Haru is a kind and tender girl. Later, in the auditorium, the school principal presented Ruiz with an award in recognition of the drama club's achievements during the year. After accepting the award, Ruiz motivates his fellow students to work together to achieve higher goals. From the top of the auditorium, Lagoshi and Kain listen to his words and work on helping with rehearsals in the back. While adjusting some lights during their tour, Kai asks Lagoshi if he would like to be an actor, to which Lagoshi replies in the negative. At this, Kai explains that in a respectable theater company, everyone must be a worthy person. Not understanding, Kai gives him an example. Among the dancers rehearsing, he mentions Sheila, a cheetah who used to work in a carnivorous dancers club before joining the academy. He then mentions Mina, the giraffe of the group, who suffers from a disease called trypophobia, which prevents her from looking at herself in the mirror. Finally, he points to Moro, the team's rhino, who considers his front horn to be his guardian spirit. He also shares a bit of his own story, revealing that he was abandoned by his parents at birth and raised by hyenas. Kai argues that if they delve into the lives of all the dancers and actors, they will discover many stories, and he believes that it is impossible for all the beasts, full of problems, to come together as Ruiz told them to. He argues that everyone, even Lagoshi and Ruiz, has problems or something to hide from the others. Shortly afterwards, in another part of the academy, the leader of the journalism club reprimands his team for the article in the school newspaper about the prize awarded to the drama club. However, he complains that there is no prominent photo of Ruiz on the front page. Motivated by this, he urges them to strive for higher quality reporting increasing the paper's sales. He gives them the task of keeping an eye on Ruiz the next day during the new student's presentation event to make sure they get a good picture. As they leave, the journalism club team comments that their leader was furious, and one of them reveals that the camera doesn't work because it lacks batteries. This means they won't be able to take pictures until the second day. Although this worries his colleagues, who fear that there will be little time to develop the photos and produce the newspaper, the leader assures them that better quality images are possible on the day, as everyone will be more relaxed. Meanwhile, in his dressing room, Ruiz complains about the pain in his foot and feels he is destined to be the victim of a carnivore. At that moment, Lagoshi opens the door and Ruiz reprimands him for not knocking before entering. Lagoshi assures him that he knocked several times, but when he received no answer, he became concerned and opened the door. Although his intention was to check the stage lights, Ruiz sits down to listen to what Lagoshi has to say. Lagoshi explains that he wants to make some changes to the lights during a scene and needs Ruiz's approval, as he is hesitant about it. After hearing the proposal, Ruiz changes the subject and asks Lagoshi if his body is always strong. Lagoshi says yes, but mentions that he has trouble cutting his nails, as they grow quickly, and he doesn't know how to control it. Ruiz asks Lagoshi to stop hiding in the shadows and show his wild side. However, Lagoshi is reluctant, feeling that a wolf has no pride and must hide from others. Despite this, he senses that Ruiz is different, as he always shows his strength to everyone. Lagoshi is embarrassed and leaves when Ruiz mentions to him that the students will see that strength in the theater the next day. On the way out, Lagoshi hears a girl speaking through a megaphone, announcing that it is Environment Day, and that all students should participate in an activity to celebrate it. He decides to join the initiative and offer his help. Upon arrival, he greets a lion before entering a room where he sits with other wolves in the moonlight. As he sits down, Lagoshi reflects on Ruiz, noting that his scent was a little faint earlier. At that moment, a female wolf next to him asks if rabbits can live on the moon, to which another wolf replies in the negative, explaining that there is no oxygen to breathe on the moon and rabbits would not survive. These comments lead Lagoshi to gaze at the moon in front of him and remember Haru, as she was the first to treat him as a werewolf. Despite Rui's words about being simply a carnivore, Lagoshi sees himself as more than that, a mammal, a canine and a male wolf. Looking at himself in the mirror, he feels the urge to step out into the hallway, feeling confused by the connection he experiences with her. Upon reflection, he comes to the conclusion that being with Haru brings him happiness, and he longs to see her again. The next day, moments before the play begins to welcome the new students, Ruiz reflects on what he should do. 
For him, making a mistake during a scene is a failure, and he considers that the best thing to do is to have confidence in himself. Later, backstage, he shares his thoughts with the team, urging them to be confident in their abilities and to surprise the new students. He wants to show that they are a united group that respects the differences between carnivores and herbivores. Listening to Rui's speech, Lagoshi senses that he seems to be trying to convince himself of what he is saying. He is not wrong, as Ruiz does not have full faith in his own words, but he is determined to make the performance a success. At that moment, Lagoshi checks the stage lighting and Ruiz's makeup, assuring them that everything is ready to begin. The play begins, and at the end, Ruiz hears the applause, but collapses to the floor. He discovers that they have had to close the curtain, and they call in other animals to help him. When the journalism club team gives the photos to their director, he is furious that they are not of good quality. A wildebeest points out that he was never able to capture Rui's face, as he always wore a mask during the play. Moreover, at the final farewell, Rui's did not appear, which increased the irritation of the director, who is suspicious of the situation. Meanwhile, the members of the drama club accompany Rui's to the infirmary, where he is still unconscious. When Rui's wakes up, he inquires about what has happened and Sanu informs him about the fracture in his leg. A tiger tells him that, according to the nurse, he will not be able to perform the next day. Sanu scolds Ruiz for his performance and tells him that they cannot ignore the situation. Despite the praise from his colleagues, Ruiz, thinking they are overreacting, suggests that Bill the Tiger replace him in the play, as he is one of the most dedicated actors. Bill is thrilled and begins rehearsing immediately, but worries that Lagoshi will not want to take his place in the performance. Although he has no choice, as there is no other suitable actor available, Bill sets up a stage with Lagoshi to teach him his part. During the fight in rehearsal, Bill encourages Lagoshi and assures him that he should not feel bad about excelling on stage. Lagoshi then reflects on Bill's words, but is interrupted by Els, who asks for support for the next day's performance and stresses the importance of teamwork. Lagoshi agrees to compromise and, after dismissing Els, sits on a bench to reflect on the day's events, determined to support his team. The next day, before the performance, Ruiz approaches Bill to encourage him, assuring him that everything will be fine. However, Ruiz warns him not to get complacent, as each character is unique and must move the audience. He urges him to commit fully to his role before stepping aside. Bill asks Bill to help Lagoshi recognize his true nature and no longer hide behind a friendly image. Although this contradicts Lagoshi's essence, Bill explains that he appreciates being a tiger and having the freedom to express himself without restraint. Bill then approaches Sanu to confirm that he is ready. Lagoshi, noticing a strange smell, follows them into the bathroom and, upon inquiring about the smell, Bill shows a vial of rabbit blood. This revelation infuriates Lagoshi, who thinks that Bill should not have used that blood to propel himself during the performance. Although he feels powerless, he remembers Rui's words, urging him to stop denying his nature. The play begins with Bill on stage next to the zebra, feeling afraid of the responsibility of his role. Remembering Rui's words, he decides to act authentically and surprise the audience. When Lagoshi enters the stage, he decides to punish Bill for using rabbit blood, disconcerting the students. Despite his injuries, Bill fights back and finishes Lagoshi off with his claws. About to finish him off, Ruiz intervenes, confronts Bill and removes him from the stage. Ruiz then helps Lagoshi to his feet, creating a sensation among the audience. The next day, the Academy newspaper promises to address the changes in the play highlighting Lagoshi in the picture. Upon seeing the picture, some of the girls comment on the difference in the play, especially the scene between Lagoshi and Bill. Lagoshi's friend Jack overhears their comments and thinks they are overreacting, but continues on his way to the pool to bring Lagoshi an egg and soy milk sandwich. Lagoshi asks Jack about the atmosphere in the dining room, and his friend shows him the newspaper article, titling it The Dark Hero. Although Lagoshi acknowledges the recognition to Ruiz, deep down he thinks Jack didn't notice that he wasn't acting. However, he is uncomfortable and hesitant to confront Ruiz after the meeting with him and Bill, where he asked for an explanation of what happened during the play. At the meeting, Bill responded in an unsure manner, and Ruiz announced the temporary suspension of both of them from the drama club. At that moment, some girls arrived to take pictures, and one of them expressed interest in interviewing Ruiz. Before approaching the girls, Ruiz instructed his companions to pretend that everything was triggered. When the reporter asked about the play, Ruiz said it was all planned as a challenge to the students. He argued that by making these changes, they intended to show the audience the personal challenges they face in a world full of ethical difficulties. Ruiz urged self-confidence, asserting that life will shine with confidence if that confidence is maintained. 
back in the present, Lagoshi feels he has let Ruiz down. Jack asks him if he is no longer annoying, and Lagoshi realizes that his friend realized what happened. Jack reveals that, as long-time friends, he knows Lagoshi, especially when he is angry or sad. Lagoshi admits that he was upset and needed to vent, but he doesn't like feeling that way. Jack persists and asks if anything different has happened lately. Suspecting that Lagoshi is in love, Jack begins to inquire about the girl, making Lagoshi uncomfortable. Meanwhile, Ruiz is with Haru in bed, asking him to make him happy. A few days later, in the garden, some dogs and wolves are having their fur cut to sell in a fur shop while other children are contemplating their holidays. The drama club celebrates the news that they will be performing again during the summer festival, although not everyone shares the same joy. Concerned about the additional workload for Lagoshi's team, they decide to meet at the warehouse. During the meeting, the idea of changing the animal usually used in the parade comes up, but some argue that the main thing is not that the parade is full of dinosaurs, but the ceremony on the last day. In this ceremony, if a couple leaves a candle burning, it is said that their relationship will last a long time. After leaving the auditorium, some members of the Lagoshi team are left with a lack of appreciation for their work by others. Others express concern about spending the summer without partners, as they finish late and one of them is perceived as dangerous when angry. Realizing that they are referring to him, Lagoshi decides to leave the group. A few seconds later, in one of the school corridors, Haru tries to change the water on some flowers. However, she is again disturbed by Mizuchi and her friends, who manage to knock her down and tease her. When she gets up, Mizuchi asks her if she has approached her boyfriend again, to which Haru replies that she has not. Although Mizuchi continues to blame her, Haru tells her that if her boyfriend hasn't come back for her, it has nothing to do with it. This infuriates Haru, who asks Mizuchi to stop chasing the other rabbit so that he will stop ignoring her and not prefer extinction. However, she does not want to listen any longer and leaves. After this confrontation, Haru notices that the girls are walking away, but doesn't notice that Lagoshi is behind her. After she runs away, Haru feels sorry for being so rude. One of the girls comments that she is going to be eaten, and as she turns around, Haru runs into Lagoshi. Looking at him, Lagoshi is silent, thinking of what words he might say as she waves at him. Seeing no response, Haru decides to pick up the flowers and Lagoshi picks one up, finally asking her if she is alright. She, not wanting to be bothered, tells him that she doesn't talk to the boys she's been with. Lagoshi reminds her that he hasn't been with her, and she, despite her reservations, invites him to dinner. In the dining hall, Lagoshi offers his backpack to Haru so that he can sit with him at the table. As they eat, Lagoshi feels nervous around Haru, not noticing that some of the students murmur at the sight of them. He tries to ask his name unsuccessfully, standing naked. Seeing him silent, Haru asks him if he is not going to eat, and Lagoshi comes to something as he thinks Haru's voice is that of a lonely girl. Haru thanks him for avoiding being with her the other day, and Lagoshi senses that she is trying to get away from him, which is true. Although Haru wants to be his friend, she is also afraid of him. After lunch, they walk towards the residences. On the way, Haru's shoe comes untied and Lagoshi helps her with it. Not knowing her name, he calls her Rabbit. Annoyed, she asks him to call her Haru, as that is her name. When Lagoshi introduces himself, she smiles, and he wags his tail excitedly. That night, on the television news, they report an incident in which a gazelle named Linda was attacked by a group of carnivores in the street. The news affects two of Lagoshi's fellow residents, who retire to their rooms feeling unwell. They leave Lagoshi and Jack alone in the game, which enters Jack. Lagoshi reflects on how carnivores are used to being blamed for the deaths of other animals. As he walks to his room, he observes a gray she-wolf being disturbed by some herbivores. Although hesitant at first, Lagoshi decides to intervene and tells the molesters that the she-wolf is his sister, successfully driving them away. After that, he approaches the she-wolf and asks her not to feel bad, suggesting that she should get used to the situation. However, she finds it unfair to be constantly harassed due to being a carnivore. Lagoshi assures her that it is okay to feel this way, and encourages her not to hide her emotions as he does. Deciding to withdraw, the she-wolf recognizes him as part of the drama club and introduces herself as Juno. Being new to the club, he expresses his interest in talking more with Lagoshi, who accepts the proposal. Later, at the drama club, Sanu instructs the carnivores to handle the parade themselves, due to the incident with the gazelle. Before he leaves, Ruiz warns them not to stray into the black market, although Lagoshi does not understand what he means. Later that night, at Lagoshi's home, 
Ayaba, one of his companions, asks him if he has visited the black market. Legoshi replies in the negative, to which Ayaba comments that all carnivores tend to frequent the black market when they reach adulthood. The next morning, Legoshi's team arrives in the city, and he realizes that he hasn't visited for a year. Observing the harmonious coexistence of herbivores and carnivores, he feels such an intense emotion that his tail wags involuntarily. Afterwards, the boys decide to have a drink before starting their work and share experiences about girlfriends and relationships. Bill suddenly asks Lagoshi when he will stop being a virgin, pointing out that he can smell it. He suggests that Lagoshi might start dating Juno, as they are of the same species. After completing their work, they head for the train station to return home. But as it is dark, they get lost. Lagoshi decides to ask directions from a herbivore sleeping in the street. But the herbivore, seeing Lagoshi, fears that he wants to eat him and asks Lagoshi to kill him quickly to avoid suffering. As the herbivore talks, Lagoshi tries to resist the smell of its blood. At that moment, they find themselves in front of the black market, which they had been told about earlier. Bill sees an opportunity to eat one of the herbivore's fingers, but Lagoshi refuses, remembering Haru's warning about the incompatibility of carnivores and herbivores in friendship. Despite resistance from Ayaba, who disagrees, Lagoshi decides to protect the herbivore. Bill tries to explain to him that thanks to the black market, the city maintains a peaceful coexistence between the two species. However, Lagoshi persists in his refusal, out of respect for Haru, and runs to escape from the black market until he exhausts himself. In this state, Lagoshi reflects on the difficulty of confronting Bill, as he too feels the urge to consume meat. Finally, he is found by a panda bear, who takes him home. Subsequently, Lagoshi wakes up, noticing that he is tightly bound in chains and muzzled. Faced with this situation, he assumes that he is in trouble. When the panda, identified as Gaojin, comes to examine him and removes the muzzle, he asks Lagoshi to avoid showing his fangs and gives him a punch. Gaojin introduces himself as the black market panda and tells Lagoshi that his behavior reflects that of a carnivore that has already attacked a herbivore. After getting Lagoshi's name, Gaojin inquires as to which animal it attacked. Lagoshi admits that he attacked an animal, but did not kill it when he realized his actions. Gaojin explains that carnivores share a common instinct, the race and detra of the black market. He explains that hospitals and funeral homes secretly donate meat to prevent carnivores from killing herbivores and to maintain order in the city. He mentions that carnivores experience symptoms ranging from hair loss in mild cases to self-harm in severe cases. Showing pictures of carnivores with such traumas, Gaojin asks Lagoshi for his perception. Asked how he knows these things, Gaojin reveals himself to be the psychiatrist who treats carnivores on the black market. He invites Lagoshi to decide whether to consider him friend or foe, considering his work to prevent further deaths. Lagoshi, explaining who he is and what he does, is released by Gaojin, who, while drinking bamboo tea, listens to his story. Although Gaojin feeds on bamboo, Lagoshi notices that his characteristics are those of a carnivore. Intrigued, he asks him if he has managed to control his wild instincts. Gaojin claims that he controls his instincts and helps carnivores in the black market but some of them do not improve and have hurt him. To protect himself, he trained and became a muscle doctor on the black market. Lagoshi finds his story hard to believe and asks him how he treats carnivores. Gaojin tells him that he is doing the same thing he is doing to him, mistaking hunter instincts for feelings of love. He warns Lagoshi that his wild side will not allow him to be friends with a herbivore and advises him to stop seeing her. Grateful, Lagoshi scorns himself. Before leaving, Gaojin hands him an adult magazine with pictures of rabbits, suggesting that he determine whether his emotions are genuine or driven by his carnivorous instinct to trap for food. After leaving the place, Lagoshi rushes to the underground station and meets Ayaba, who also escaped from the black market by reflecting on Ruiz and his fellow herbivores. Listening to Ayaba, Lagoshi experiences similar emotions and, without realizing it, begins to cry. He feels the need to stay strong to resist the temptation to consume herbivores and to support his friend Ayaba. The next day, during a lesson on fish, Lagoshi sits next to Legum, a chicken. Legum, feeling uncomfortable about sharing a seat with Lagoshi, whom he nicknames Eyebrows because of his expression, shows his displeasure. After class, as Lagoshi enjoys some egg sandwiches and chats with Jack about how delicious they are, Legum reveals that Wednesdays are the day she provides the eggs for the sandwiches, which she sells to the school. She takes pride in her work, training and maintaining a healthy diet to ensure the quality of her eggs. However, a few days later, Lagoshi decides to eat something different instead of the sandwich, commenting that the eggs do not taste the same. 
The news shocks Legum, who faints upon hearing this and fears that the quality of his eggs has declined. Despite this, the school decides to buy eggs from Legum on Fridays, which fills her with excitement. After selling them, she happily goes back to her class. Later, when Legoshi asks her for an eraser, she refuses, arguing that she only has one, and becomes excited thinking that Legoshi will realize that her eggs have been changed to Fridays when he eats lunch. At the same time, Haru finds herself in Rui's room, and noticing his sad expression, she recalls the first meeting she had with him in her first year. On that occasion, Ruiz had broken his antlers and asked to stay with her while they were being repaired. Since then, she has visited him often. While resting on his bed, Ruiz asks Haru if she will attend the festival, and she confirms that she will, as she will be selling plants and flowers. However, Ruiz does not want her to go, as she pledged to attend with her promise to keep the family legacy. He offers her money not to participate but Haru embraces him and expresses that she would rather have his love than his money. At this, Ruiz reminds him of his commitment and asks him to accept that he will be at the festival with his fiancé. Ruiz then asks Haru to take care of himself and prepare to leave the room. When he opens the curtain, he finds Legoshi standing in front of him, which irritates him. He orders Legoshi to leave, as Haru is not present. In an annoyed tone, Ruiz asks Legoshi why he knows Haru and for what purpose he went looking for her. Legoshi replies that he only knows her a little and that he went to visit her for a while. Seeing that Haru is not there, Legoshi accompanies Ruiz up the stairs to the festival. On the road, Ruiz cannot believe that Legoshi is in a relationship with Haru and refuses to imagine her sharing intimate moments with him. A few moments later, Legoshi asks Ruiz if he is friends with Haru, to which Ruiz nods and questions if he likes any girls. However, Legoshi is still unclear on the subject, so Ruiz suggests that he go out with Juno to get to know her better. While working in the auditorium, Legoshi notices that he continues to experience growth, which causes him to worry about becoming more distant from Haru. Regretfully, as he stretches out his front paws, he is startled to notice Juno standing next to him. At that moment, Juno shares with him that he was assigned to be a carnivorous dinosaur in the parade and asks him for help with the choreography. Watching her dance, Legoshi admires her beauty and gives her advice on a step she is hesitant about. Juno is moved by his advice, thinking it is great, and decides to confess her feelings to him, asking him if he shares her feelings. Legoshi answers in the affirmative, explaining that it is natural between animals of the same species. At that moment, Sheila arrives in the auditorium, which makes Juno feel bad for not being able to express her loving feelings for Legoshi. Simultaneously, in Legoshi's room, Jack is undecided about where to go during the festival. He accidentally discovers Legoshi's adult magazine, which makes him question whether he still knows his childhood friend. Noticing Legoshi's arrival, he quickly hides the magazine and freezes when he sees Legoshi enter the room. Legoshi explains that he came back because a hedgehog poked him, and then lies down on his bed and closes the curtain to play with some insects. At this point, Jack decides to broach the subject and asks Legoshi what is happening to him. He also mentions that, while looking for a comic book he borrowed, he found the magazine. At this, Legoshi is upset and explains that ever since he met Haru, he has been confused. He has tried to analyze his feelings for her from different perspectives. All of this leads Jack to think that Legoshi is in love with Haru but Legoshi clarifies that he is not. He explains that he thinks it is better to calm his feelings and move away from her in order to regain their old relationship. Later, while Legoshi is fetching water to help paint the dinosaur for the fair, Haru comes up behind him and greets him. After a few seconds, Legoshi greets him back, and Haru asks for help with some plants, to which he refuses on the grounds that he has a lot of work to do. Watching her walk away, Legoshi reflects that it is best to keep a distance between carnivores and herbivores. Later, while he is busy painting the dinosaur, Legoshi notices that Ruiz knows Haru as he has come to greet her. Witnessing the proximity between them, Legoshi cannot help but feel jealous of Ruiz and realizes that he is in love with Haru. After completing the painting of the dinosaur, Kai lights it up to check that everything is in order, and Legoshi stands beside him looking at its tail. The ostrich then urges everyone to leave the school early. He explains that they cannot stay any longer because of recent incidents of predation. Later, at the flower stand, Haru is busy painting posters when the mayor approaches to install her to return to school. He warns her about the risks of staying there, as she could get hurt. After the conversation with the mayor, Haru realizes that she is alone and fears that no one will notice if something happens to her. At that moment, Legoshi appears in front of Haru and offers to accompany her back to school. Haru is puzzled by the change in his attitude, as he used to be distant and now seems enthusiastic. 
She asks Lagoshi why he wants to accompany her, and he replies that he wants to protect her from danger. Later, while waiting for the underground to return to school, Haru inquires about Lagoshi's behavior that day. He tells her about the day they met and how he did not understand her thoughts at the time. Awkwardness takes hold of Lagoshi, who avoids changing the topic of conversation. Haru insists on talking about that day, pointing out that, despite their attempts at intimacy, they are now friends. Legoshi tells him that the subject makes him feel bad, and he prefers not to talk about it. When the underground arrives, Haru tells Legoshi that he will never understand herbivores because he has never suffered the constant threat of being eaten. Although Legoshi stops her to protect her, some passengers misinterpret the situation and believe she is being attacked. Haru pulls Legoshi by the backpack and asks him to run to avoid trouble. During their escape, Haru explains to Legoshi that he could be charged with attempted assault, so he asks him to run faster. Legoshi feels good for the first time in front of his first love as he runs fast, although he confesses that he doesn't know where they are going or if they will be caught afterwards. When they find refuge in a bathroom and avoid the underground employee who was chasing them, Haru notices that Legoshi avoids touching her. On their way out, they sit in a park to talk. Haru reveals to Legoshi that she was attacked by a carnivore at school earlier, without being able to identify it. Legoshi decides not to tell her the truth, as it would end their friendship. Finally, upon arriving at school, Haru says goodbye to Legoshi and asks him to find happiness. At the next morning's rehearsal, Bill causes an injury to Rui's front leg, and Rui's puts on a bandage to ease the pain. Legoshi approaches him to discuss his injury, but Ruiz rejects the conversation and quickly installs everyone to concentrate on the rehearsal to avoid mistakes during the festival. Juno arrives late and apologizes to the team, but his attention seems focused only on Legoshi. Ruiz immediately notices that Juno has joined the dance team. After the rehearsal, Juno is left to clean up the auditorium as a result of her tardiness. Ruiz finds her alone and asks her why she is still there. She reminds him that she is making up for her late arrival and asks for his help with the choreography. During the rehearsal, Juno declares war on Ruiz, thinking he hates her. She announces that she will be the next B-star and that Legoshi will be her partner, and together they will create a peaceful world between carnivores and herbivores. Ruiz, at these words, comments that it would be a pleasure to be eaten by her, but Juno makes it clear that she has no such intention, as women do not usually go looking for trouble. Ruiz perceives Juno as greedy for achieving all her goals. Before saying goodbye, she warns Juno that not everything she desires is possible and that she will face problems with Legoshi. Ruiz's words leave Juno pondering what the problem with Legoshi might be, and the idea occurs to her that he might have a girlfriend. She decides to go to the fair to greet the group and talk to Legoshi alone. During their conversation, Juno asks Legoshi if he believes in the tradition of lighting a candle to make the relationship last a lifetime. Regretfully, the lights go out and Legoshi urges his companions to stick together to protect each other. At that moment, Legoshi remembers that Haru is alone and goes in search of her, finding her behind one of the dinosaurs. As he approaches, Haru excitedly embraces him. When the lights come on, Haru apologizes for the gesture, and Legoshi offers him a handkerchief to wipe himself. From a distance, Juno watches Legoshi and refuses to believe that he could be in love with a rabbit. The next morning, Ruiz experiences a nightmare with the number 4. When he wakes up, he notices some young boys playing basketball near his room, which takes him back to memories of his childhood. At the age of 5, he was rescued from the black market, where he was treated as a commodity for carnivores, by an adult reindeer, President Aguma of the Antler Conglomerate. This man adopted him and made him a promise to be strong and change the world. After waking up, Ruiz decides to visit Tem to assure him that he will keep the promise he made to his adoptive father, ensuring that his sacrifice was not in vain. In the hallway of his residence, Legoshi reflects on Tem's death, now three months past. He feels the pressure of the need to find out who killed him and becomes nervous as he recalls his inability to confess his feelings for Els. During this moment, he recalls the time he searched for Haru during the blackout, instigated by Ruiz. Legoshi assumes that Haru and Ruiz have been a couple for some time, and feels at a loss as to how to approach the situation. On his way to Tem's grave, he encounters Ruiz, but does not feel like talking to him, opting to hide in a living room. As he ponders his continued loyalty to Tem, he notices Ruiz retreating and preparing to leave the room. At that moment, he realizes that a leopard is about to attack Ruiz and, without hesitation, rushes in to save him. Questioning the leopard about his motives, he reveals that the carnivores want to attack Ruiz because he will be named B-Star at the festival, 
which will result in the loss of profits for the carnivores in the city. Legoshi, however, values Ruiz as a loyal friend and decides to protect him from the other carnivores. His resolve is strengthened by the thought of his relationship with Haru and the need to talk to her to clear the air. Soon after, Legoshi approaches Haru to express his feelings, but she makes excuses to avoid listening to him. Despite her attempts, Legoshi asks her to pay attention to him during the meteor festival the next day, making it clear that he doesn't want to force her to get close to him or take her away from Ruiz. He just wants her to listen to him. Haru, later, is confused by what she said to Legoshi, as she does not wish to hurt him or be hurt by him, being aware of the complexities of their relationship as carnivore and herbivore. While reflecting, Haru is interrupted by a group of carnivores who kidnap her, leaving only a shoe and a black card that says Shishigumi in its place. After a while, some kids discover the shoe and card and, reporting it to a zebra, try to call the police. Although initially hesitant, the zebra finally accepts the gravity of the situation when he reads the card and decides to keep it a secret while they wait for it to be resolved. The mayor appears before them, promising to take care of the problem for their safety, but he knows there is little he can do for Haru and is more concerned about the integrity of the festival. Despite feeling relieved after talking to the mayor, the boys sigh worriedly for Haru as they walk. When Legoshi approaches, he asks about Haru, but the boys remain silent, unable to reveal what has happened. At the same time, at the Shishigumi headquarters, a group of lions is discussing Haru, considering her the perfect prey for their leader, an old lion. Haru, hearing them, tries to escape without success. At that moment, the leader appears and questions why they are scaring Haru. When they are left alone, the lion assures Haru that he will not harm him and asks him about his age. He then asks her to undress to confirm that she is completely white, despite Haru's reluctance. Upon observing her unclothed, the lion suggests that she bathe in a nearby bathtub to improve her taste when the time comes to consume her. Meanwhile, at the fair, the mayor asks Ruiz to keep Haru's situation secret. He argues that revealing the truth could deteriorate relations between carnivores and herbivores, and as the next B-star, it is Ruiz's responsibility to prevent trouble in the city. Although Ruiz disagrees, the mayor offers to erase his black market record and keep his secret if all goes well at the festival. Despite his annoyance, Ruiz accepts the proposal. After the mayor leaves, Ruiz complains that he can't do more for Haru. At that moment, Legoshi appears to propose that they go together to save Haru, but Ruiz refuses, leading to a verbal confrontation. Ruiz hits Legoshi and berates him for his ignorance of being a carnivore. He argues that causing a fuss over a single animal would jeopardize peace in the city. Although Legoshi disagrees, Ruiz insists that he should understand the situation. Ruiz explains that, despite being a wolf, Legoshi tries to be kind in order to be accepted by everyone. However, Legoshi disagrees and fights with Ruiz to convince him of the importance of looking for Haru. When other animals notice the fight, they separate them, and Legoshi reproaches Ruiz for not helping Haru, warning him about the consequences of choosing fame over her. He makes it clear to her that he is willing to fight to stay with Haru. Later, Legoshi decides to follow Haru's trail to the city center, although he anticipates that it will be difficult to follow his scent in the crowd. At that moment, an iguana approaches and offers to help him. Legoshi asks the Shishigumi, but the iguana is surprised, claims to know nothing and leaves. As he continues to ask other animals along the way, he gets similar answers. However, he encounters two felines who claim to be carrying the Shishigumi and decides to follow them. He soon discovers that it is a trap and tries to escape. The felines threaten to kill him and sell his skin, but before they can harm him, Gaojin appears and rescues him. Legoshi, excited to see him, asks him about the Shishigumi, and Gaojin quietly warns him about the criminal nature of the group, which consists of 35 lions who deal in herbivores. Despite the warnings, Legoshi persists and asks Gaojin where he can find them. Gaojin insists that he not take such a risk, suggesting that the girl might be dead. Legoshi, determined to save her and apologize for his past, insists on getting information and, receiving no help from Gaojin, leaves on his own. At the same time, at the fair, Legoshi's companions are restless because of the heavy rain, which prevents them from returning home. At one point, they begin to discuss the fight between Legoshi and Ruiz. Suddenly, Juno approaches Ruiz and questions him about whether the fight had anything to do with Haru, as well as asking about Legoshi's current parade. Ruiz simply apologizes and suggests that they may never see Legoshi at school again. Meanwhile, Legoshi stands in front of the house where he has Haru, formulating a plan to enter. However, his intentions are discovered by a lion, who threatens him with a gun. Recognizing Haru's scent on Legoshi, 
He asks about her and is told that she is probably on the top floor with her boss, who may have already consumed her. Fury overcomes Legoshi, who attacks the lion with determination, proclaiming that Haru is his prey. In the midst of the fight, the lion is distracted by these words, allowing Legoshi to strike him. Before the lion can shoot, he falls dead and Gaojin, who had arrived, saves Legoshi's life again. Gaojin advises Legoshi to use his teeth to defend himself, and together they fight off more lions, gaining entry to the house. Once inside, he continues to confront the lions. Legoshi, anxious to be reunited with Haru, advances to the upper floors. Meanwhile, on the top floor, Haru pens a reflective letter about her life. He describes his experience as the younger sister of a family of albino rabbits, constantly warning him of his fragility. Although at first she felt protected by being considered tender, she eventually ceased to perceive herself as a helpless animal. He started dating boys in third year, but considers that his time is coming to an end and regrets not having confessed his love to Ruiz. At that moment, she remembers Legoshi, the peculiar boy who never saw her as vulnerable prey. When a lion suggests that her meat will taste better if she feels shame, Haru refuses to give him the pleasure of being a delicious dinner. However, the lion tries to attack her, and Legoshi arrives just in time to rescue her. He pushes the lion away and removes his shirt to cover Haru, expressing his apologies for being sweaty. Haru, surprised, asks him why he is there, and Legoshi, though he has many reasons, decides this is not the time to talk. As they fight the lions, Haru wonders if Legoshi should have risked so much to save her, while he feels the need to continue protecting her. Later, at Legoshi's home, his fellow residents are uneasy about his absence. Since he left all his belongings at the fair, Jack speculates that something urgent must have happened, as it is not like him to act like this. As they ponder the Legoshi parade, they decide to head to his room in search of possible clues. Upon arrival, Jack examines his bed and finds nothing out of the ordinary, except for the sad realization that Legoshi's beetle has died interpreting this as a bad omen. Back at the Shishigumi hideout, Legoshi continues his confrontation with the old lion and suggests to Haru to retreat. Despite this, she refuses to leave him in the middle of the fight and chooses to stay by his side during the confrontation. Finally, the lion asks Legoshi to end the fight, at which point Legoshi asks Haru to close his eyes and thank him for being a wolf. He then attacks the lion with his jaw to make him lose consciousness, worried that Haru will see him as a beast. At the end of the fight, he asks Haru to accompany him out of the place and, although she is afraid, she takes his hand and he hugs her. However, due to his injuries, Legoshi faints for a brief moment before walking with Haru out of the house. On the way out, Haru asks Legoshi if he fought all those lions, to which he replies no, as he was helped by a panda. Haru then asks him which way he prefers to be supported to walk. At that moment, from the room, the old lion, who is now awake, tries to attack Legoshi with his gun but is stopped by Ruiz. Ruiz stops the lion from shooting Legoshi and threatens him with a gun until he observes the two of them walking away. After that, Ruiz decides to eliminate the lion to prevent it from killing him, and in doing so, he chooses to flee, encountering two lions. Faced with this situation, Ruiz chooses to reveal his identity with the number he had on the black market, and asks them to devour him. After a while, in a nearby square, Legoshi rests on a bench while Haru feels responsible for his injuries. Later, Legoshi suggests going for a bite to eat, and they head to a restaurant where they are served by a pelican who serves them extra-large egg noodles. Before leaving, the pelican urges Legoshi to eat, noting his faded appearance. When the pelican leaves, Haru comments on Legoshi's organization in keeping money in his shoe, to which he replies that it is a habit taught to him by his grandfather. Haru inquires whether Legoshi was spoiled by his grandfather, and he clarifies that it is just a childhood memory. Suddenly, Haru feels that their lives have become intertwined because of all that Legoshi did to save her and wishes to remember that moment. After watching him eat for a while, she suggests to Legoshi that he goes to the train station to return home. However, the pelican informs them that the last train has already left. With limited money, they decide to spend the night in a hotel until the next day, taking advantage of the long summer nights. Back at Legoshi's residence, a teacher enters his room and asks his classmates about his parade. Noticing that they have no information about it, she points out that Legoshi is breaking school rules by spending the night out of his room. Since they have also noticed Haru's absence from his room and books for communicating with small animals are found in Legoshi's backpack, 
The teacher suspects that the two are together, considering this a serious offense. However, Jack defends Lagoshi, expressing his disbelief that he could do anything wrong with Haru, sharing his opinion with the teacher. Later, Lagoshi and Haru arrive at a hotel that supposedly accepts couples of different species. However, it turns out to be a couples-only hotel, leading Lagoshi to suggest that he sleep outside and Haru stays inside. Despite Lagoshi's suggestion, Haru refuses, arguing that he saved her and it wouldn't be fair for him to sleep outside, especially when he is injured. Convinced that there would be no problem, Haru insists on renting the room together. Upon entering, she decides to turn on the air conditioning and asks Lagoshi to sit next to her on the bed. At one point, when Lagoshi approaches to kiss her, Haru interrupts the situation to ask him to wash her clothes, preventing them from being stained with blood the next day. While washing Lagoshi's flannel, she notices scars on his back and asks him about them. Legoshi shares the story behind the wounds, confessing that they occurred after he met her, and revealing to her what happened that night. Haru, upon hearing the truth, mentions that she had sometimes considered the possibility that he was responsible for attacking her. Despite this, she decided to be his friend because she enjoys his company so much, although she admitted that she did not know what to think of him. Later, Haru comments that Lagoshi's decision to hug her or eat her is his, to which Lagoshi replies that he cannot do the latter. At that moment, Haru notices the strong beating of his heart and caresses his face. Finally, he decides to lie down, and instinctively, Haru tries to insert himself into Lagoshi's mouth, suggesting a carnal act. And Haru explains that, just as carnivores are driven by their instincts, so are prey, indicating that their body simply craves to be consumed by him. With these words, Haru apologizes to Lagoshi and asks him what his next step will be. Lagoshi suggests that it would be most appropriate to rest until the next day. Before going to sleep, Haru decides to wash Lagoshi's flannel. Later, during his rest, Lagoshi experiences a positive feeling for having saved her and finally falls asleep. The next day, they leave the hotel on foot and Haru thanks Lagoshi for rescuing her, sharing that he laughed at her snoring. When they arrive at school, Lagoshi goes straight to the infirmary. And there, his teacher scolds him for breaking the rules. And then disappearing with Haru, who is a different species, makes Lagoshi understand why the world is the way it is. For his teacher is not worried about his injuries, but about his breaking the school rules. A few seconds later, Juno shows up to visit him and his teacher leaves them alone. So she tries to approach him, unsuccessfully. And as she does so, she tells him that she overheard his conversation with the teacher and believes in him. Because she knows how brave and strong a wolf is, she asks him to touch her to calm her down. However, Lagoshi doesn't want to touch her, and says that he feels calm and seeing the expression on his face, Juno feels him pushing her away. On her way out of the infirmary, Juno meets Haru at the door and tries to invite her in. But Haru declines the offer and leaves. Juno decides to follow Haru, and they both end up running. Haru, intrigued, asks Juno why she is chasing her, and Juno catches up to her, grabbing her arm. At that point, Juno questions Haru about his ability to make Lagoshi happy. Haru, feeling pressured, advises Juno to introduce herself first to make a good impression. After the introduction, Haru tries to explain to Juno that her relationship with Lagoshi is not as simple as it seems, urging her not to worry. However, Juno, suspicious, decides to sniff Haru to determine if he was with Lagoshi, which causes Haru to fear the possibility of being attacked. Juno, after performing this action, assures Haru that she is determined to make Lagoshi happy, and will demonstrate her intentions during the festival that night. Later, during the festival, Kai urges Lagoshi to go to the residence after helping with the boxes so that he can rest and avoid further accidents. Sanu mentions Rui's disappearance, which worries Lagoshi who feels the need to talk to him and make sure he is alright. Before he can address this issue, Juno bursts onto the scene, sporting a surprisingly sexy outfit that leaves everyone gasping. Catching the attention of her companions, Juno urges them to do their best that night, despite Rui's absence. They all agree to support her, and Lagoshi has a feeling that something important is going to change during the event. A few seconds later, Lagoshi remembers his appointment with Haru and heads to the agreed location. Arriving and not finding her, he begins to worry, unable to smell her due to his stuffy nose. Meanwhile, Haru reflects on his experiences over the past 24 hours and hears that the show is about to begin. He decides to walk over and watch Juno stand out in the dance with the team, sensing the wolf's strength. Remembering how small she has always felt, Haru reflects on how Lagoshi sees her differently. Simultaneously, Lagoshi searches the audience for Haru, worried that he can't find her and unable to smell her. 
When Haru finally approaches, he asks him to listen to her, but before he can speak, Juno intervenes. After the show is over, Juno calls Lagoshi, praises him as a hero for risking his life to save a herbivore student, and introduces him as a great representative of the carnivores. Although the audience applauds, Lagoshi only has eyes for Haru. Juno invites Lagoshi to light a candle to symbolize the support of the carnivores in the fight for a better world. Lagoshi, however, tells her that they cannot light the candle, as they are not a couple. Juno argues that she needs his backing to let the carnivore's light shine as they work for a better future. At this point, Haru walks down the street alone, feeling upset about the situation with Juno and recognizing that she and Lagoshi would make a suitable couple. She realizes that society would not support a relationship between a wolf and a rabbit, and feels that it is unfair to try to claim Lagoshi for her own. Despite these reflections, she decides to keep her distance from Lagoshi, but he does not share the same opinion and follows her to accompany her. Upon meeting, Haru scolds Lagoshi for leaving Juno alone and expresses to him that the two of them are the ideal couple, urging him to leave her alone. Lagoshi replies that Haru is simply his partner in the club and that he prefers to stay in the dark rather than the light. He explains that his personality does not fit into a visible place, and he wants to face challenges together with her. After hearing this, Haru points out that, despite being adults, they will still be a wolf and a rabbit, and that will not change. Lagoshi confesses to her that when he heard about her abduction, he felt that his prey was taken from him and that this raised doubts about why he saved her. However, it is now clear to him that the reason is his love for her. At that moment, Haru, anticipating what Lagoshi is about to say, decides to run to avoid listening to him, convinced that they should not be together. However, Lagoshi persists and runs after her to finally confess his love and promise her that he will be stronger to resist his instincts and social pressure in order to make her happy. With the end of summer comes news of Rui's disappearance and other notable events. Upon returning to school, Jack meets Lagoshi and asks him about his experience during the summer holidays. Lagoshi replies that he hasn't tried watermelon and invites him to share one. On a starry night, Lagoshi's friends are on the roof of the school, guided by Jack's promise to observe shooting stars. Despite their best efforts, they fail to spot any. Jack rushes into the room to fetch his telescope. However, when he rushes back, he finds a tin can on the floor, which turns out to be Thames. He then realizes that he's not the only one. At that moment, he realizes that he is standing in front of Thames' grave, and, looking behind the door, he discovers several pairs of moving eyes, which frightens him and causes him to flee. The next day, during class, Jack insists on the veracity of what he saw, although his friends doubt his connection. Despite his explanations, some classmates jokingly suggest the presence of a six-eyed monster, but Jack seems unconvinced. At that moment, another student joins the conversation and claims that in classroom 2, where Tem's grave is located, is his ghost. When asked how he knows this, the boy mentions that it would explain the nightly sounds of footsteps, as well as the recent disappearance of Ruiz, who frequented the place. Meanwhile, Lagoshi is busy sending messages on his phone, as he is anxious to meet Haru and talk to her. Lagoshi explains that he always invites Haru, and it is she who chooses the meeting place. That day, during their meeting, Lagoshi mentions to Haru the rumors about the ghost in the school. Haru comments that there are indeed many rumors, but not all of them are true, as she is always alone and does not feel afraid, except for the night they met. These words generate concern in Lagoshi, who apologizes to Haru. However, she thanks him, as it was thanks to this meeting that they were able to get to know each other. Later, Lagoshi asks Haru why they always choose that place to meet, and she explains that it is to avoid being disturbed. Upon hearing this, Lagoshi wants to help her, as he doesn't want her to be bothered by spending time with him. Haru reveals to him that they always bother her, but she prefers to give them reason to do so and would rather keep things the same, as she has a lot of fun talking to him. Later, at the drama club, Lagoshi reflects on what Haru told him and feels that things are more complicated than he thought. Initially, he thought they were in a dating relationship, but it seems they are not. At that moment, one of the boys calls him to listen to Sanu who informs them about the auditions for that year's play. Sanu explains that they must wait for Ruiz to show up for the auditions, but the others disagree. They argue that if Ruiz were present, he would have already looked for a replacement for the missing actors. Bill adds that the last time he saw Ruiz was the night before the festival, and Lagoshi remembers that meeting as well. That night, in his room, Lagoshi hears the sound of rain, as two boys head towards room 2. Intent on proving to Jack that there is no danger there, they also decide to investigate and, to their surprise, see the eyes, which startles them and sends them running back to their room. 
Concerned for his friends, Jack questions whether they are all right, and soon after, they arrive visibly frightened to tell him what happened. He decides to go to the journalism club to ask the editor to publish the story, but the editor refuses. At that moment, Lagoshi remembers the sound he heard the night before during the rain, and they all remember hearing footsteps. Convinced that it is not a ghost, they insist that the newspaper should cover the story, but the editor asks them to leave. Later, Lagoshi meets Ruiz in the school garden, surprised to see him after two months of absence. Ruiz joins the team and submits his letter of resignation, expressing his appreciation for the time spent making his audience happy. He states that he has chosen to fight differently and despite the place he will miss. Watching his departure, Lagoshi wonders about what happened to him and reflects on Rui's enigmatic phrase about the reversal between light and dark, not understanding its meaning. Kai interrupts him to ask him to quickly erase the blackboard with the cast of the play. After completing the task, Lagoshi passes Juno in the hallway, but she avoids talking to him due to the lack of response when he confessed his feelings to her earlier. Juno feels that her love is not enough to overcome the contempt he might have for her kind. In tears, she asks Lagoshi to tell her once and for all that he does not accept her, and he tries to console her. Later, Lagoshi convinces Juno to accompany him to take the moonlight in the living room. Upon arrival, they meet other wolves who, thanks to Juno's speech, now treat them better. Juno is comforted and expresses her admiration for Lagoshi. As he watches the other wolves talking happily with Juno, Lagoshi reflects on how Juno now symbolizes justice among the wolves. At that moment, in the teacher's lounge, the teachers are discussing the absence of the headmaster, who had to attend a meeting of the Living Beings Council. At this meeting, the next B-star of the school will be chosen, after five years without such a selection. The next day, during class, Lagoshi's classmates read in the newspaper that a hamster was responsible for scaring the students. Lagoshi asks who was responsible for taking the photo, and Callot replies that he and another student set up a camera to find the culprit. Callot then shows the photos captured by the camera, while some students express their dissatisfaction at feeling cheated. Then another student notices the photo of Juno, who is a candidate for Miss Cheriton. Soon after, Lagoshi is cleaning up at the drama club, pondering whether he has found his purpose in life at the age of 17. Suddenly, a strange sound captures his attention, making him think of the supposed school monster. Later, he shares this experience with his friends. However, Jack suggests that the sound could be the result of Lagoshi's stress and lack of sleep. However, when Lagoshi hears the sound again, he reacts by hitting the wall hard, causing surprise and concern among his classmates. He apologizes and proceeds to repair the damage. Later, while washing his clothes, he hears the sound again and asks the person responsible to come forward, arguing that otherwise his companions will think he is losing his mind. In response, Lagoshi smells a different smell in the laundry and hears a voice assuring him that he will report to him. As the living leaders meeting begins, Charenton's principal, visibly nervous, greets the other leaders. They ask him to share information about their candidates for B-Star, given that his school has not nominated anyone in the last five years. Afterwards, one of the leaders asks him if it is true that the main candidate, Ruiz, no longer attends classes, to which the headmaster nods. He takes the opportunity to express his opinion that he does not think it is fair to give such a big responsibility to one student, as they are all valuable and it should not be necessary to nominate just one. In response to this, another leader expresses his disagreement, pointing out that it was this way of thinking that led to the death of one of his students. Back in the school laundry, Lagoshi looks in amazement at the person responsible for the disturbing sound. It turns out to be a giant snake which, after introducing itself, tells Lagoshi that it has its eye on him. At that moment, the washing machine announces that it has finished its cycle, and Lagoshi asks the snake for a moment to collect his clothes. As he performs this task, the snake admires Lagoshi's bravery in turning his back on him and savors it. After picking up the clothes, Lagoshi asks the snake who he is. The snake reveals that he is the school security guard and comments that Lagoshi has surprised it, surrounding it. He then tells her about the incident at the play, where Lagoshi lost control because of Haru. When Lagoshi asks Lagoshi why he hides if he is a security guard, the snake explains that he does so because he is a rattlesnake and that is part of his nature. Immediately, the snake captures Lagoshi, mentioning that it can no longer allow him to hide his true nature. As Lagoshi feels the snake's pressure, the snake asks him how he can fight with limbs, expressing envy that he does not have arms and legs. At this, Lagoshi decides to touch the snake's skin to get to know it better and asks it about its feelings regarding the lack of limbs. After the conversation, the snake senses that Lagoshi is trying to comfort it and withdraws, considering him to be an exceptional individual. 
However, noticing that the snake is moving away, Lagoshi runs after it to continue the conversation and manages to catch up with it in front of Tem's grave. At that moment, the snake asks Lagoshi for help in catching Tem's killer, as it has been six months without a clue, and believes that with Lagoshi's sense of smell, intelligence and physical ability, they can solve the mystery together. Back at the leader's meeting, the headmaster continues to listen to the leader of the small animals. This leader shares the view that leaders are born and not made, so he proposes to choose the student who succeeds in capturing Tem's killer as the next B-star. The headmaster is reluctant to accept this proposal. However, the other leaders insist and demand that he quickly solve Tem's case, voting in favor of the proposal to force his acceptance. While this is going on, the snake continues to persuade Lagoshi to help her solve the crime for the benefit of the school. Some time later, Lagoshi finds himself alone in front of Tem's grave, reflecting on why Tem died there. The next day, in the school canteen, two alpacas, Carl and his friend, are sharing a meal. Carl, the male, was Tem's friend, and the girl is worried because the thefts of girls' clothes have been going on for days. When Lagoshi sees them, he thinks Carl might have information about Tem's death, and Jack asks him if there is a problem. Lagoshi explains that he wants to talk to Carl, but is afraid to scare him if he approaches him directly. Jack suggests that Els might be able to help, and after a while, Lagoshi talks to her about finding Carl. Arriving at the alpaca restroom, Carl is frightened, but Els explains that Lagoshi was a friend of Tem's and simply wants to talk. Later, Lagoshi asks Carl questions about possible problems Tem may have faced or reasons for going out at night. However, Carl has no clear answers, and other alpacas and sheep ask him to leave without providing information. At that point, Lagoshi remembers seeing a running animal the night before and decides to talk to it. At night, Lagoshi approaches the boy runner and asks him if he remembers his actions in April. The boy replies that he does not remember because it has been a long time, but Lagoshi realizes that he is responsible for stealing girls' clothes. He captures him, but realizes that he still does not have the information he is looking for. A few days later, during class, some boys inform Lagoshi that they know about the action he took against the clothes thief, identified as Roger and a member of the boxing club. They congratulate him on his intervention on behalf of the girls. Before class begins, Carl approaches Lagoshi and hands him Tem's diary. While reading it, Lagoshi discovers that Tem had a close relationship with a carnivore, which leads him to decide to share this information with the snake. Upon telling him, she congratulates him on his dedication to the investigation and points out that there may be a valuable clue in the diary. Meanwhile, in the city, a meeting takes place between the Shishigumi and a turtle. They offer her protection in exchange for half of their earnings. In an attempt to persuade her, the Shishigumi assure her that they can protect her from gangs of foxes, jaguars and monitor lizards. Despite their arguments, the tortoise is skeptical and asks to speak to their leader. In response, they call Ruiz, the new leader. On seeing him, the tortoise is surprised, and Ruiz explains that, although they made mistakes in the past, the Shishigumi have undergone a change. He recommends doing business with them to improve their company and leaves. While traveling in the car, Ruiz reflects on how the best way to deal with the carnivores is to lead the Shishigumi. Back at school the next day, Lagoshi opens his locker to organize some things and reflect on the snake's words. He comes to the conclusion that Tem's killer is probably a carnivore who is enrolled at the school. He immediately shares his suspicions with his fellow drama club members, which provokes Bill's irritation, as he interprets him as accusing them of being responsible. Lagoshi clarifies that he is not pointing fingers at anyone specific, but recalls that Tem's only carnivorous friends were in the club. The argument between the boys escalates until a male ram interrupts their confrontation by opening his own locker, cleaning it and leaving. Before leaving, he asks Lagoshi about the injury to his arm. After his departure, Bill suggests beating the ram, considering him a spoiled child, while the others watch silently. At that moment, Ruiz recalls the events following the death of the Shishigumi leader when he offered himself as food for the lions. After killing the gang leader and proposing himself as successor, the lions, undecided about who could fill the vacant position, recognized Ruiz. Just before he was devoured, one of the lions proposed him as their new leader. Surprised by the suggestion, the lions accepted and, before Ruiz could commit suicide, one of them stopped him. A few days later, Ruiz awoke among the lions and the one who saved him insisted that he become their leader. As a gesture of welcome, they offered him a piece of meat to share with them. Despite his initial revulsion, Ruiz held back his nausea to show strength in the face of the lions and ensure his survival. He decided to eat a piece of meat in front of them and immediately asked for more. 
On returning to school, the drama club meets to welcome its new addition. This is Pina, a first-year ram whom Sanu introduces to the group. After greetings, Pina expresses her desire to enjoy the club and make new friends. In the middle of the introduction, Bill questions why Pina was accepted near the end of the year, to which he replies that the club needed an attractive actor. According to him, it has been proven that carnivores cannot be considered handsome due to the constant fight against their instincts. This statement provokes the anger of the carnivores in the team, who are eager to confront him, while Lagoshi tries to remain calm. At this point, Pina provokes Lagoshi by accusing him of being responsible for Tem's death, but his teammates come to Lagoshi's defense. Later, during the carnivore meeting, Bill wants to attack Pina and devour him for his arrogant attitude. Noticing Lagoshi's presence, he asks him if he also wants to let off steam, as he joins them that night. Another member of the group suggests that Lagoshi is there to uncover Tem's killer. Lagoshi makes it clear that his intention is for everyone to work together to protect herbivores and dispel doubts about them. However, Bill points out that, despite their efforts, herbivores are always wary of carnivores. He refers to Lagoshi's relationship with Haru and, seeing Haru's reaction, realizes that nothing happened between them, they just slept together. Lagoshi tells his companions that even if something had happened, he would not reveal it because those memories are meaningful to him. Ayaba comments that what Lagoshi feels for Haru does not seem like love, but rather an act of faith. He suggests that, at his age, he should enjoy love instead of making life difficult for himself to protect the herbivores. After listening to Ayaba, Lagoshi reflects on his feelings for Haru and decides to contact her to meet. During the conversation with Haru, Lagoshi senses her femininity and approaches her with the intention of kissing her. Just before he does so, he asks her about her feelings for Ruiz, but Haru remains silent. Lagoshi examines her facial expression and, noticing something, decides to break away from her. He expresses his joy at her well-being and communicates his desire to protect her. Before leaving, he asks her to allow him to continue to watch over her from a distance, as he understands Ayaba's perspective. A while later, Lagoshi is sitting under a tree, reflecting on his emotions. Consider that his responsibility as a carnivore is to protect the herbivores. However, he is oblivious to the shadow behind him. Suddenly, Lagoshi remembers the moment when Tem asked him to touch his fur, expressing curiosity about whether it was different from that of sheep. Although at the time Lagoshi described the fine, soft texture, he now realizes that he doesn't feel as connected to Tem as he initially thought. His priority is to find out who was responsible for his murder. At that instant, Lagoshi senses the presence of another animal nearby, and unsuccessfully tries to escape as he is confronted by a large carnivore. It hits him hard, knocking him unconscious. Upon regaining consciousness, Lagoshi notices that he is tied up and being dragged by his attacker. He then feels himself being sat next to a wall, but is unable to identify his attacker, as he has been blindfolded and prevented from smelling him. Lagoshi asks his attacker if it was him who killed Tem and receives a blow against the wall in response. He senses that his attacker is pleased to show his strength, and Lagoshi lets him know this, receiving another blow. In the midst of the beating, he recalls Tem's words and reflects on the friendship between carnivores and herbivores. He also recalls Haru's remark that he would never understand the danger of death, and Lagoshi believes she is right. He decides to repay the kindness he has received from his herbivore friends. Later, Lagoshi senses his attacker approaching, so he decides to bite him to identify him. Despite being hit, he manages to identify the taste and regrets not having kissed Haru when he had the chance before facing his possible death. In Lagoshi's room, Jack is watching a video with Kalat when he receives a call from Lagoshi. When he answers the call, he notices that Lagoshi is not talking to him, just breathing, so he decides to go out to look for him, taking some tissues with him. In the corridor, Jack tries to listen to Lagoshi and notices a familiar noise. He rushes to his friend's aid, but feels his chances of helping him diminish as he goes. Meanwhile, Lagoshi regrets not telling him his location and hopes that Jack will not be frightened by the sight of him. Finally, Jack finds Lagoshi and, after freeing him, asks him if he knows who was responsible for his condition, to which Lagoshi replies that he does not know the identity of the assailant. After some time, Lagoshi informs his friend that he will not be attending school for a while. He asks Jack to inform the teachers that he had to take care of his sick grandfather and to give a book to another student. Although Jack has doubts about Lagoshi's plans, Lagoshi does not reveal any more details and instead warns him about the danger he would face if he stayed at the school. Before leaving, he thanks Jack for his help and assures him that he will not tell him where he is going, concerned for his safety. Jack reflects that Lagoshi will probably not return, 
noting that his friend has been dealing with internal problems for some time. He senses that as Lagoshi grows stronger, his inner sadness increases, which moves him to tears. Lagoshi, for his part, perceives Jack as bright and distant, in contrast to his own quiet and wounded nature. Although he senses this difference, Lagoshi can't wait to get away, so he jumps the school fence and runs while Jack watches him. Arriving in the city, Lagoshi looks for Gaojin in the black market, the only adult he trusts. While buying bamboo from a turtle, the turtle asks him what happened to him. Gaojin appears behind Lagoshi and asks the turtle for 50 kilos of bamboo, narihina and dried leaves. After placing his order, he greets Lagoshi and comments that, despite the bruises, he seems fine. Lagoshi notices that he really wants him to train them and expresses this before Gaojin leaves, but Gaojin immediately refuses. After healing his wounds, Lagoshi tells Gaojin about the situation at his school and expresses his concern that the dangerous carnivore is still on the loose. He insists on asking Gaojin to train him, but Gaojin again refuses, arguing that he is the black market doctor and cannot risk his reputation. Lagoshi tries to convince him, pointing out his calmness and emotional control, but Gaojin points out the problems with the Shishigumi and how his presence could affect the black market. At the suggestion of staying for a few days, Gaojin disagrees, as it would affect Lagoshi's grades. Discouraged at not being able to help his schoolmates and unwilling to stay behind, Lagoshi feels bad. Gaojin, hearing his concerns, thinks of a solution and asks him to sit down. When he does, a chair is activated to immobilize him from head to toe, disconcerting Lagoshi as the panda appears to be attacking. At a nearby venue, a show of nude dancers is taking place, including a herbivore named Cosmos, apparently the star of the show. As she takes to the stage, she provokes the excitement of the audience, and her boss activates a cage to protect her during her performance. In the middle of her routine, another jealous dancer deactivates the cage, and a tiger lunges towards Cosmos with the intention of attacking her. The boss intervenes, using the microphone to control the situation, saving Cosmos just when she thought her end was near. The Shishigumi take measures to punish the tiger and prevent future attempts to attack the dancers. Ruiz appears in front of Cosmos, concerned for her well-being. She advises him to leave before she is devoured, but the conversation is interrupted by one of the lions, who recognizes Ruiz as their new leader. Surrounded by the Shishigumi, Ruiz chides the carnivorous dancer for her act, emphasizing that the group's new mission is to protect the weakest. Cosmos, surprised, asks if Ruiz is the new leader of the Shishigumi, to which he introduces himself and offers her a handshake. Over dinner, the lions comment that several black marketplaces are looking for the Shishigumi to offer them work, grateful for the help they provided in the incident at the dancer's shop. Ruiz is praised for the idea of becoming their leader, noting that without him, their situation would be different. Although one of the lions feels that the position of leader is strengthening the group, Ruiz responds with pride and toasts with red wine before tasting his dinner, a steak. However, remembering that herbivores cannot eat meat, he retreats to his office after declaring that he has had enough. In his office, Ruiz vomits up the consumed meat and ponders his survival on energy drinks, unsure how long he will be able to keep it up. Ibuki, the lion he asked to be his leader, enters, concerned about his increasingly thin appearance. He hands her a packet of mixed salad, expressing his wish that Ruiz will feel good about taking on the role of leader. Despite the good intentions, Ruiz senses that Ibuki sees him as weak and rejects the salad. Ibuki tries to calm him down, but at that moment, another lion informs Ruiz that a young she-wolf is looking for him, making him nervous that it might be Juno. After a while, Juno follows Ruiz as he ponders what he will say to convince him to return to school. At that moment, Ruiz stops and asks her about the situation between Lagoshi and Haru the other night. Juno informs him that Lagoshi was seriously injured, but she was unharmed, which reassures Ruiz. Ruiz then inquires about how she managed to find him, and Juno explains that she got the idea to search that place after her comments the night he disappeared. Ruiz thanks Juno for looking for him, and she questions him about his presence there. Ruiz reveals that his role is to hide the truth behind a facade and pretend that there is justice in the world, although he acknowledges that instincts and force prevail. This reality led him to decide not to return to school. Deciding to change the subject, Ruiz compliments Juno, telling her that she looks very pretty. In turn, Juno returns the compliment, commenting that Ruiz looks more elegant, and assuring him that she has not yet become a dark figure. Ruiz shares with her that with the Shishigumi she learned to be stronger and understood that they too struggled with their instincts. In Ruiz's office, the two lions talk about him, and one expresses the opinion that he should not have let him go. Ibuki, on the other hand, believes that he will be back before long. 
The other lion reveals his intentions to eat Ruiz when the Shishigumi recover, but Ibuki does not share that idea. He warns him that he is now the leader and that any attempt to harm Ruiz will result in him becoming dinner for everyone. At that moment, Ruiz and Juno perform one of the theater club's choreographies, and Ruiz notices Juno's remarkable progress in her performance. Meanwhile, Juno reflects that, despite Ruiz's claims, peaceful coexistence between carnivores and herbivores might be possible. This thought leads her to express her disagreement with the idea that they cannot decide for themselves what to do. Juno refuses to follow the same path as Ruiz, so she runs to get away, declaring to him that she wishes to have the freedom to choose. Before leaving, she calls Ruiz a fool and warns him that when she reaches a respectable position, she will talk some sense into him. The next day, at Lagoshi's residence, Jack questions his friend's parade. While his companions, who are watching a video, suggest that they call Lagoshi, Jack assumes that he is unlikely to return. However, unaware of Lagoshi's presence behind him, Jack is surprised when Lagoshi apologizes for staying out all night. As he leaves his room, the other boys wonder if it was really Lagoshi, as his appearance is different. Later, at the drama club, Lagoshi explains to his classmates that he looks different because he cut his hair short. Although in reality, it was Gaojin who did it to avoid being recognized on the black market. He then mentions that he has to take care of his sick grandfather at night and asks for help with the cleaning. Sanu replies that it is no problem and Lagoshi observes the reactions of his classmates, while reflecting on Gaojin's request that he continue with his school activities to prevent further tragedy. Later, the girls discuss whether they like Lagoshi's new look, and Juno expresses her enthusiasm, saying she loves it. During the night, Gaojin spends some time listening to the radio before heading to Lagoshi, who is confined in a cage with a piece of meat. Upon arrival, Gaojin leans out of the window and urges Lagoshi to control himself, as it is only his third day of training. However, Lagoshi finds it difficult to restrain himself as the meat in front of him, being provoked by its smell and generating saliva. At this, Gaojin asks him to control himself, even if it is difficult, by recording his nature and suggesting that he use the stress he feels to his advantage. After the training session is over, Lagoshi rests on a balcony and Gaojin tells him that he looks pale due to the effort he puts in both at school during the day and at night training at home. He then mentions that carnivores need to eat meat to become strong. Despite Lagoshi's resistance, who does not find it logical to protect herbivores while they eat their meat. In response, Gaojin argues that even athletes and soldiers secretly consume meat for strength, but Lagoshi is adamant in his refusal. Later, at the drama club, Pina notices that Lagoshi looks haggard and asks him if something is wrong. Lagoshi is surprised by Pina's kindness and asks him about his change. Pina explains that the club president asked him to be kind to his fellow members. However, she then questions Lagoshi about his apparent change in appearance and his new haircut, suggesting the possibility of mental illness. Lagoshi realizes that Pina has not changed at all and asks him to pay attention to the auditorium depository on the president's orders. Pina shows little interest in learning about the storeroom and the behind-the-scenes activities, apologizing to Lagoshi. As Lagoshi continues to explain to her the layout of things in the storeroom, she smells a strong odor of a woman. Stopping, he notices the mark on Pina's cheek and asks what happened to her. Pina, embarrassed, confesses that it was his girlfriend, as he called her by another name when he kissed her, which made her angry. Pina asks Lagoshi if he has a girlfriend, and he replies that he does not. In his mind, the image of Haru greets him, which makes him feel uncomfortable. Lagoshi tries to avoid talking about it any further, but the image of Haru haunts him. Pina grabs Lagoshi's arm to stop him, noticing that he is thinking of only one girl, and comments that this is typical of dogs. Pina, curious about a man's love for a single girl, turns out the lights and suggests that, if he were a girl, she would kiss him. However, being a wolf, she fears that the first thing Lagoshi might think of if they are left alone is to eat him, giving her permission to do so. Lagoshi, annoyed, assures Pina that he has no intention of eating him and that he has no girlfriend. Despite this, he decides to go to the cafeteria because of his hunger and desire to eat vegetables, while Pina watches him walk away. At that moment, at Rui's father's home, he decides to tell him that he is leaving the school and asks him to sign his letter of resignation. At this revelation, his father interprets the situation as an act of rebellion, and Ruiz expresses his desire not to remain at his side. Despite Rui's response, his father recalls the 13 years that have passed since he adopted him and mentions the loss of the money he has invested in him, stressing that he no longer plans to help him with his business. Contrary to Rui's expectations, his father does not address business-related issues, 
but recalls how good he felt the day he adopted him. As Ruiz reflects on the few moments shared with his father, he experiences the feeling that it should be easier for him to let him go. However, upon receiving silence from his father and the absence of a signature on the letter, Ruiz becomes desperate and opts to draw his gun to force his father to sign. During this moment, he informs him that he is now the leader of the Shishigumi, and that, after signing, he will not cause him any more trouble. As his father watches, Ruiz goes on to say that he has always been wild and has returned to his roots. In response, his father comments that he has known him since childhood and is aware that he is not a decent deer. He recalls Ruiz's suicide attempt when he first met him, before the carnivores ate him, and now sees him associated with the Shishigumi. However, he feels that he is taking the situation to the extreme by wanting to abruptly sever all family ties. His father then tells Ruiz that he never knew how to love someone he had bought, but this situation has given him pause for thought. In a surprising tone, he comments to Ruiz that, if he allows him to kill him, he would gain notoriety as a tycoon who died because of his son's criminal activities. To Ruiz's disbelief, his father decides to sign the letter of resignation from the academy. Later, while enjoying a drink in a bar, Ruiz reflects on his inability to understand his father's intentions. A few minutes later, Cosmos approaches and sits down to talk to him, but Ruiz immediately makes it clear that they will not be friends. She understands and asks him at least for a chance to thank him for saving her life the other day. Cosmos then orders two vegetarian juices, explaining that the bar owner is considerate of herbivores and that the bartender is friends with a guinea pig. When the juices are served, they toast and Ruiz, impressed by how delicious it is, almost drinks it in one gulp. Observing this, Cosmos senses that Ruiz is not yet used to the black market and shares with him that it took her eight years to adjust, but that she does not now plan to return to her old life. However, she believes that Ruiz still has time to escape. After finishing her drink, Cosmos leaves, and the bartender asks Ruiz to take care of himself. As he watches her walk away, Ruiz reflects on the last words of his father who indicated that he will not stop working because of his misbehavior and suggested that he return when he has the courage to shoot her. However, Ruiz has doubts about the possibility of returning to his father. His drinking over, he decides to return to the Shishigumi headquarters, as he feels protected there, and it was his choice to stay. The next morning, Lagoshi returns to the place where he was attacked by Tem's killer, thinking that the only clue he has to him is in his mouth. Although the fight was intense, he has decided to immerse himself in the investigation. Meanwhile, Juno waits in the dining room for Lagoshi to arrive, as he summoned her there. When he arrives, he greets her and asks to see her teeth, which makes her uncomfortable, especially after she expressed her love for him. Lagoshi explains that he is researching dentures and, despite Juno's confusion, manages to convince her to allow him to examine her mouth. Other observers comment that the flirting between wolves is strange. After a few seconds of inspection, Juno expects a kiss from Lagoshi, but he is only interested in analyzing her teeth. When he finishes, he sits down and informs Juno that, as he suspected, there are differences between male and female teeth. To demonstrate this, he shows her his own teeth and leaves, thanking Juno for her cooperation in the investigation and mentioning that he will see her at the drama club. As Lagoshi walks away, Juno feels that he has played with her feelings again, which upsets her. At night, Gaojin reflects on the week Lagoshi has spent training to resist his desire for meat. Deciding to check on his progress, he enters and finds Lagoshi handling a piece of meat while reflecting. Noticing Gaojin's presence, Lagoshi tells him about what happened with Pina the other day, saying that the incident gave him the determination to continue protecting herbivores. Lagoshi then invites Gaojin to accompany him to the beach, where Gaojin notices that Lagoshi buries the meat. After performing this symbolic act, Lagoshi gives the grave a name and shares some details about the lives of the animals whose pieces of meat they used in their training. Lagoshi obtained the pieces of meat from a funeral parlor, where he was provided with information about the animals. These gestures lead Gaojin to believe in Lagoshi's ability to fulfill his goal of respecting the lives of herbivores, and he congratulates him for it. The next day, Lagoshi struggles to find the motivation to study, as his grades have dropped considerably. However, fatigue overcomes him for a while. When he wakes up, he detects a familiar smell and discovers Haru in front of him who tells him about a date he had with another boy. Curious, Lagoshi asks about the boy, but Haru is reluctant to reveal details. Questioning whether he is bothering her, she confesses that she feels neglected, as he hardly writes or visits her, and besides, he is no longer present at school in the evenings. Haru also mentions his behavior the day before, when Lagoshi interrupted her by asking about Ruiz and then left. 
Upon hearing this, Lagoshi understands Haru's feelings and apologizes for making her feel bad, explaining that he is working on getting stronger. Despite his attempts to explain his actions, Haru seems to pay no attention to him and confides his sense of loneliness. At that moment, Lagoshi reminds Haru of his promise to wait for him while he grows stronger for her. Suddenly, Lagoshi considers proposing marriage to Haru as a way of protecting her and keeping other suitors away. At this proposal, Haru suggests a courtship first. But Lagoshi, impatient, tries to skip this step to prevent her from dating other boys. Haru is hurt, interpreting Lagoshi's attitude as selfish, and tells him that she will not marry him and will date whomever she wishes. After this statement, Haru leaves in annoyance and, on her way out, rejects the advances of another boy who invites her to meet him for the night, explaining that he is interested in someone else. Later, in the drama club, Lagoshi is still deep in thought about Haru as he watches a puma struggling to lift a heavy box. Bill appears, who also tries to carry it unsuccessfully. At that moment, a grizzly bear arrives and carries the box away. Upon witnessing the scene, some of the girls comment on Bill's supposed strength, to which he replies that his real strength lies in his jaw. He tries to explain it through a game, but Ayaba, a member of the club, objects, arguing that it is a game exclusively for carnivores. Despite the objections, Bill convinces some carnivores to participate and distract the girls. Upon hearing the proposal, Lagoshi thinks he could learn something from Bill, despite their differences. Bill asks Lagoshi to face him in the first game, and although Lagoshi is not happy with the idea, he decides to go along with it. His motivation lies in the possibility of uncovering Tem's killer if he makes it to the end. However, to his surprise, Lagoshi loses quickly and realizes that his jaw is weakened. After a while, Lagoshi reflects on his progress in training and is puzzled by the weakness of his jaw. Taking advantage of the fact that the other boys are still participating in the competition, Lagoshi searches their lockers for clues. Although he finds nothing relevant, he notices a deformed plastic inside one of the lockers, interpreting it as a threatening message addressed to him. The message warns that he will be killed if he does not stop reporting Tem's death. Determined to get more information, Lagoshi leaves the locker room to ask a question of the club's ostrich, named Dom. At that moment, a shocking accident occurs, one of the dancers, a cougar, rips off Kibai's arm, who is visibly frightened by what has happened. Attention turns to Kibai, who seeks the help of Lagoshi. Lagoshi, with the assistance of a grizzly bear, takes Kibai to the infirmary after canceling rehearsals. Later, the cougar, visibly worried about Kibai, is comforted by his friends as he makes his way to the infirmary. After leaving Kibai in the bear's care, the bear advises Lagoshi to clean his blood-stained uniform. Handing him a handkerchief, Lagoshi confronts the bear, Riz, realizing that it was he who killed Tem. Riz explains that it was an impulsive act during an out-of-control moment. Despite the explanation, Lagoshi warns Riz not to think he will go unpunished, and in response, Riz threatens him to prevent him from revealing the truth. Suddenly, Pina arrives with Kibai's belongings and, after handing them over, hints that she won't say anything even though she cares. The three boys sit down to talk, as Riz seeks to eliminate them to prevent him from revealing his guilt. Pina points out that if he hurts them, the police will investigate the drama club, quickly finding out. Although Pina says she will not talk, she assures Riz that justice will prevail, and he will not be able to sleep peacefully. Pina then asks Lagoshi to accompany him, while Riz is left alone and frustrated. Later, at Lagoshi's residence, the children go about their daily chores and discuss among themselves that classes at the school have been suspended. Soon, they all receive an official message from the school authorities. The communique announces that, starting next school year, a complete separation of carnivores and herbivores will be implemented. Meanwhile, Bill, reading the news in the bathroom, is surprised to learn that the drama club will be closed for the next few months. Some time later, on his way to the drama club, Bill experiences sadness and tries to calm down on the way. On his way, he meets Els, and they discuss the closure of the drama club. Bill, pessimistic, thinks there is nothing they can do about it. Els disagrees, though, suggesting the possibility of protest. Arriving at the club, he organizes to stage a protest. During the night, Riz has difficulty falling asleep, and one of his companions asks him if the medication he is taking is causing him problems. Riz explains that he takes medication to control his aggression which causes him discomfort, and only Honey gives him relief. Although everyone in the club perceives him as a gentle bear who enjoy Honey, he recalls a night when Tem confessed to him that he was afraid of him. Faced with Tem's honesty, Riz opted to share more details about his situation and told him about his medication. 
they decided to meet more often so that Riz would feel better. But on one occasion, Riz decided to stop taking the medication. When he revealed it to Tem, Tem panicked and inadvertently hurt him, triggering a chase in an attempt to explain, culminating in the tragic death of his friend. Riz relives each moment with vivid intensity. After a few days, Sheila joins other girls to take a picture with the intention of sharing it on a social network called Beastbook. However, when she looks at the picture, she feels uneasy due to the events related to the drama club and the attacks directed towards herbivores on the network. Later, over lunch, Sheila shares her feelings with Juno, who explains that herbivores are very wary of comments, as their survival instinct makes them wary of carnivores. Juno suggests that the best way to show kindness to herbivores is to take pictures of them together on social media, and she practices this herself. Despite this, Juno is annoying, as she does not believe that all problems are the responsibility of carnivores. To prove her point, she invites her friend Peach, a sheep from the drama club, for a walk around the mall, and Peach accepts the invitation. Once at the mall, Sheila is nervous and cautious not to scare Peach. While exploring the winter clothes, two boys comment on Sheila's slim figure and Peach asks her about it. Sheila relaxes as she talks to Peach and explains that cheetahs have long legs, but because of the spots on their fur, they cannot wear patterned clothes. Peach understands the situation. Afterwards, they go shopping for Peach, and Sheila goes out of her way to help, which makes her feel bad for having been afraid of her earlier. At the end of shopping, the girls enjoy ice cream and Sheila suggests, taking a photo together to share on social media. During the night, in the black market, a striped hyena steals a piece of meat and consumes it, bones included, in an alley. Gaojin explains to Lagoshi that the hyena has an addiction to meat and asks him to help him catch it to tackle its addiction. Unbeknownst to Lagoshi, he becomes the bait to capture the hyena. After a fight, Lagoshi discovers that he does not need the strength of his jaw to defeat the intruder with the strength of his arms. He manages to subdue it and bring it to Gaojin. The next day at school, Juno receives the exciting news that she has been selected to play the role of Adler, the lead in that year's play. Sanu, the club's president, seeks to prove that Juno has the ability for the lead role, and also intends to change some of the club's long-established traditions. Juno sees this opportunity as an excellent way to showcase her talent and assures Sanu that she will do her best. After the day's rehearsal is over, Juno leaves the club and receives words of encouragement from Els, who assures her that everyone will back her up to make sure the play is a success. Although Juno feels on good terms with the majority, seeing Haru, she remembers that she is the only one who can make her angry. Furious to get to know her rival better, she follows Haru to the garden club, where Haru mistakes her for Legoshi when he greets her. Haru, intrigued, asks Juno her name and invites her to see the plants at the club. Juno interprets this as Legoshi admiring her for her work with the plants. When Haru tries to lower a box using a broom, Juno rushes to her aid to prevent her from getting hurt. During this act, Juno urges Haru not to take risks, suggesting that Legoshi noticed her because he wants to protect her. However, Haru is not interested in talking about Legoshi and, as a gesture of thanks for her help, invites her to lunch. Sitting next to Haru, Juno experiences mixed feelings, as she is in favor of the changes at the school. After eating a piece of bread, Juno begins to feel bad about herself, questioning whether she is really worthy of being a B-star like Ruiz. Haru, hearing her thoughts, asks her about Ruiz, and Juno informs him that she saw him recently and that he was worried about her. At this, Juno decides to leave, and Haru recalls some moments shared with Ruiz. Meanwhile, in the black market, Ruiz reflects on Haru as he approaches a shop to make transactions. Later, on the terrace of a building, Ruiz contemplates Ibuki, whom he sees as a father figure due to his constant protection. Noticing Ibuki in silence and with a serious expression, the latter shares with Ruiz that he was also a black market commodity, but managed to escape on his own. At that moment, Ruiz reflects on how his life has changed. In a turn of events, Ruiz receives a call from Haru, but instead of answering, he throws his phone away to avoid communication. The next morning, Ruiz examines the Shishigumi's finances and notices a significant increase in their income. However, Ibuki informs him that they are having difficulty obtaining a crucial ingredient for one of their products. Ruiz inquires about the importance of the ingredient and, confirming its relevance, asks Ibuki to conduct an investigation. Later in the evening, Lagoshi collaborates with Gaojin as he ponders the need to rescue Ruiz. Although distracted at times, Gaojin reminds him of the important task of capturing two gazelle meat addicts. Lagoshi, using moves taught by Gaojin, manages to catch the two offenders, unaware that Ibuki is watching the scene. 
After locking up the offenders, Gaojin praises Lagoshi's performance, but Lagoshi feels that it is not enough. He has a strong conviction to defeat the grizzly bear, so Gaojin advises him not to overtrain to avoid injury. Despite understanding Gaojin's words, Lagoshi questions Rui's parade and how to rescue him. At that moment, Gaojin discharges a cheetah that has successfully recovered after feeding on two ferrets. Lagoshi asks Gaojin why he does not hand his patients over to the police, to which Gaojin replies that punishing all carnivores is not easy and does not guarantee peace. Instead, he seeks to be fair, recognizing that not everyone can overcome their addictions, but needs help to do so. The next day, Tao, the cougar who hurt Kibai, decides to go to the hospital to apologize and visit him. Upon meeting Kibai, he asks him to come over to talk, expressing his desire to overcome his fear of carnivores. With some apprehension, Tao approaches Kibai, relieved that he can move his fingers. At this point, Kibai recognizes that, despite the injury he has caused, Tao has also suffered the consequences of his actions and is happy for his visit. That night, the Shishigumi captured a young man who was stealing their missing ingredient. Upon approaching to identify him, Ruiz recognizes Lagoshi in surprise, being the last person he expected to find in that place. When the lions question Lagoshi about Gaojin, he claims to know nothing. However, his tail twitches involuntarily, revealing his joy at seeing that Ruiz is unharmed. As the lions continue to beat Lagoshi for information, Ruiz watches in disappointment. Before, he thought Lagoshi was the only carnivore with a conscience, and now he sees him on the black market stealing meat. Ruiz intervenes to stop the beating and invites Lagoshi to join them for dinner. During dinner, the lions ask Lagoshi his name, and he replies with the false name of Haruo, claiming to be a vigilante to avoid being killed. Ruiz offers him to eat whatever he wishes, but Lagoshi chooses only to eat fried tofu. This annoys the lions, as even their boss, a deer, comes meet with them. Lagoshi's surprise increases when he sees Ruiz enjoying the meat. After dinner, Ruiz is alone with Lagoshi and, seizing the opportunity, hugs him and smells the school's soap instead of meat. She asks Lagoshi to explain why he is there, and he reveals that he is training with the doctor to become stronger and fight for Haru. Ruiz, annoyed, reproaches him for his relationship with Haru, but Lagoshi assures him that he hasn't come to anything beyond feeling guilty. Lagoshi suggests Ruiz escape with him, feeling responsible for his situation with the Shishigumi. However, Ruiz prefers to stay, considering the lions his new family. He suggests that Lagoshi return to school and lead the drama club, but Lagoshi insists that Ruiz is the true leader. In desperation, Lagoshi tries to kidnap Ruiz in front of the armed lions to tell him that he has discovered Tem's killer and that the school needs him. In a daring act, Lagoshi throws himself off the balcony of the Shishigumi house, leaving Ruiz with the lions. The next morning at the drama club, Lagoshi reflects on the need to keep Ruiz's situation a secret and is happy to hear about Kibai's improvement. During the conversation between the boys, Pina advises Lagoshi to control himself, as he will not always be able to help her. Unlike Lagoshi, Tao is apparently a gentle carnivore, even though he is actually dangerous. Later in the day, in Riz's room, she prepares a meal of tomatoes and rice for her fellow bears. Although he enjoys cooking, his companions comment that the food is too salty. This reminds him that he lost his sense of taste after consuming Tem, and he worries that his life will be ruined if the other boys reveal the truth. Simultaneously, in his classroom, Lagoshi finds himself perplexed, not knowing how to control Riz and grappling with a strong desire to be with Haru, so much so that he imagines her sitting next to him in the classroom. Suddenly, he realizes that it is not an illusion, as she is actually by his side, which surprises him. However, Haru explains to him that she just dropped by for a visit. This situation arouses the curiosity of his classmates, so, at the end of the lesson, Lagoshi suggests to Haru that they talk somewhere else. As they talk, Lagoshi inquires about Haru's classes, and she notices that he cares for her like a father, in contrast to his relationship with Ruiz, who seemed like a spoilt child that he always had to protect. At this point, Haru embraces Lagoshi expressing her love for him and, despite no longer having feelings for Ruiz, remains concerned for his well-being. Hearing this, Lagoshi is comforted by the knowledge that he is loved and strives to embrace her carefully due to the size difference, avoiding causing her harm. Meanwhile, Pina flirts with a young woman, but again confuses her name, which causes her to get angry and leave. Pina then heads to the bathroom to wash up and reflect on how she once again forgot the girl's name. At that moment, she runs into Riz, who asks her to talk to Lagoshi to prevent him from revealing compromising information, as it could result in his harm 
and may even end up eating Pina. Left alone, Pina feels a sense of relief that Riz has not harmed her, and then heads to the drama club. There, she uses her fear of Riz to improvise, leaving everyone present astonished. Some time later, on the black market, Ibuki gives a new weapon to another lion named Free. This is on the condition that he uses it in case he loses control and intends to attack his leader. Hibuki acknowledges that thanks to their leader, they are leading a better life than they used to. Back at the school, Pina suggests to Legoshi that he control Riz before he does any damage, pointing out that she left him a letter to lure him out. Legoshi immediately refuses, arguing that it is too dangerous for him and runs to prevent Riz from discovering the letter. He reaches the lockers, grabs the envelope, but Riz finds it and confronts him, expressing his desire to eat it. At that point, Riz experiences a headache as he tries to find his honey jar, but Legoshi prevents him, increasing his anger. Riz then takes him to a bath with the intention of killing him. During the fight, Legoshi confronts Riz about Tem's death, arguing that love breaks down barriers between species rather than predation, as Riz believes. However, Riz argues that Legoshi is wrong and continues to attack him unsuccessfully, causing damage to the ground. In an attempt to bite Legoshi's paw, Riz hears the voice of the cleaning lady and, to prevent her from discovering the situation, asks her to wait while they clean the bathroom and decides to clean up the blood. Legoshi, confused by the change in Riz's attitude, decides to end the fight immediately, and they agree to conclude their confrontation at the end of the year. Later that night, Legoshi shares with Gaojin what happened, and Gaojin suggests that he should have handed Riz over to the police. Legoshi replies that he is following his advice and explains that, instead of defeating him, he wants to fight him. Although he realizes that he has little chance of winning, his desire is to become stronger. In response, Gaojin tells him that there is a way to get stronger before the fight. After talking to Gaojin, Legoshi goes to the forest in search of insect caterpillars, as they contain protein. However, he feels guilty about having to eat them and, upon tasting one, describes how it tastes, experiencing a sense of reprimand from the caterpillar. The caterpillar does not reprimand him for taking it, but for not appreciating what his life means to him. Before saying goodbye, the insect asks Legoshi to take it in his bones and blood. At that moment, Legoshi hears the voice of Gaojin, who asks him if he is alright, as he fainted after ingesting the insect. Legoshi replies that he will never consume another insect and that he plans to tell Ruiz about his decision. On his return to school, Riz tests different flavors in his room and finds that he is able to recognize them. When his classmates arrive, they are assured that this time the food will not be salty, all the while reflecting on his upcoming confrontation with Legoshi. Meanwhile, at the black market, Ibuki warns Ruiz that he should watch out, as some rival groups might attack him with the intention of displaying his head as a trophy. Ruiz replies that he should rather watch out for himself, as things have been going well for them since he has been the leader. Shortly afterwards, Ibuki momentarily withdraws and Ruiz notices the approach of a woman. Realizing the turn, he realizes it is Legoshi in disguise. Legoshi explains that it is him and admits that he is not very good at disguising himself, but he needs to talk to Ruiz. Although Ruiz is upset to see him, he asks Ibuki to leave them alone for a moment, even though he thinks the girl is unattractive. When they are left alone, Legoshi reveals to Ruiz that Riz was the one who killed Tem and challenged him to a duel. He wants Ruiz to support him at this crucial moment. Ruiz, however, is reluctant to get involved, arguing that he has changed his lifestyle. Despite this, Legoshi insists, reminding him that he was instrumental in his transformation and asks him to accompany him on this crucial day. Although Ruiz initially refuses, he ends up smiling at Legoshi's obviously ineffective makeup. Ruiz tells him the time and place of the duel, but reiterates that he has no intention of going. At this point, Ibuki returns and asks Ruiz about the girl, to which he replies that he sent her away, and reiterates his refusal to attend the duel. On the day of the confrontation, Riz smells Pina's scent near his residence and confronts him, questioning him about his presence. Discovered, Pina questions him about whether he will attend the duel and asks him to reveal how he killed Tem. However, Riz realizes that he is being recorded by a camera on a pole and decides to break it. At this point, Legoshi converses with Gaojin, asking him if the scar left by his last fight with Riz will remain on his eye, to which Gaojin confirms that it will. Gaojin then urges him to trust him, pointing out that no matter what happens, Legoshi's life will change after that day, thanks to his ability to understand pain from the perspective of both carnivores and herbivores. After this talk, Legoshi rides the train into morning, reflecting on his ties with Jack, his friends from the residence and the drama club. 
he feels an appreciation for them and considers that, should he not survive the night, some of them will miss him, given the affection that has developed over the year. Finally, he thinks of Haru and longs to hear his voice again if he survives. As these events unfold, Ruiz converses with Ibuki and Free, noting that he admires the protective spirit of the carnivores. As a result, he decides to support Lagoshi and informs Ibuki that in order to do so, he must leave the black market. In response to this revelation, Ibuki tries to dissuade him, raising the importance of the person he wants to protect. Ruiz replies that he cannot equate that feeling, as Lagoshi is facing something he himself wanted to run away from and feels the need to support him. Seeing that he cannot change Rui's decision, Ibuki invites him for a walk. Shortly afterwards, Lagoshi arrives at the duel site and before the duel begins, Riz tells him that, to motivate him to fight, he brought him a gift. He immediately shows him his hands full of blood and tells him that he ate Pina. Later, Lagoshi arrives at the site of the confrontation, and before it begins, Riz reveals that he has brought him a gift to motivate him. He shows his blood-stained hands and confesses that. When they enter the tunnel, Ibuki turns off the lights and hands Lagoshi a gun, urging him to kill him, otherwise he will eat him. Despite his reservations, Ruiz refuses because he respects Lagoshi. However, as he approaches to carry out the attack, he is shot and falls lifeless. Confused by what has happened, Ruiz sees Free, who claims to have kept his promise to Ibuki to kill him if he tried to attack him. At this explanation, Ruiz clarifies that he simply asked Lagoshi to kill him to free himself from the Shishigumi. In response, Free begs Ruiz not to return to the black market, so that Ibuki's death will not have been in vain. In the confrontation, Lagoshi uses his keen sense of smell to verify Riz's claim about Pina's supposed death. He discovers that Pina is alive, wounded and tied up near the scene. When confronted with this truth, Riz comments on the similarity between the two, as they are both fond of herbivores. Despite Lagoshi's denial that they have something in common, the physical confrontation begins. During the fight, Riz insists on the idea that carnivores must live in solitude and that coexistence with herbivores is only possible through predation. Lagoshi, on the other hand, advocates respect for the lives of others and reveals to Riz that it was he who ended Tem's life. Riz, surprised, claims that Tem asked him to devour him, throwing Lagoshi to the ground. Riz goes on to explain that after eating Tem, he realized that they were not friends, as it was his own choice and not with his approval. Despite the confession, Lagoshi wants more information and decides to stop the fight. They both lie on the ground while Riz shares that. After that event, he understood that carnivores are, in essence, monsters. Although he may not remember Tem's voice, he will always remember his smell and taste. Understanding the situation, Lagoshi takes Riz's hand in a gesture of support. However, Riz decides to resume the fight, arguing that carnivores are meant to hunt and devour. Despite this, Lagoshi refutes the idea, believing that the fangs and claws are for protection, not devouring. At this point, Ruiz approaches and takes Lagoshi to a high place to save him and asks him to stop fighting, as returning to the place is dangerous. Lagoshi, committed to his beliefs, insists on continuing the fight. Pina, meanwhile, manages to free herself and calls the police. Back in the confrontation, Lagoshi thanks Ruiz for his support, assuring him that he did not become a monster because of him. Ruiz, visibly moved, asks Lagoshi to leave, fearing for his safety. Lagoshi refuses, and Ruiz, on the verge of tears, begs him to leave. After seeing Ruiz cry, Lagoshi decides to stay with his friend a little longer. Ruiz reveals that this is the first time he has ever cried and asks Lagoshi to consume him to gain the strength to defeat Riz. Lagoshi, hesitant at first, agrees to eat Ruiz's foot, promising to use it to win the fight. After this act, Lagoshi returns to the duel. Riz, understanding what has happened, tells Lagoshi that, after consuming Rui's pie, he has become similar to him. However, Riz observes Rui's backing Lagoshi and understands the true bond of friendship between them. After receiving a punch in the stomach from Lagoshi, Riz decides to surrender as he realizes the genuine connection that should exist between carnivores and herbivores. Ruiz apologizes to Riz for not realizing how lonely he felt. Lagoshi and Riz are arrested for the crime of devouring, but thanks to their friend's statements, Lagoshi is released with a criminal record. Ruiz is taken to hospital for medical attention, while Lagoshi faces the legal consequences of his involvement in the confrontation. After that, Lagoshi meets Haru to tell him of his decision to drop out of school. Haru, annoyed, reproaches him both for that choice and for not sharing details about his recent scars, a subject Lagoshi prefers not to talk about. Despite Haru's complaints, Lagoshi seems to pay no attention to her. 
prompting her to express her weariness of concern for him and announces her intention to find a new boyfriend. Although Lagoshi disagrees with this idea, he follows her as she walks angrily, begging her to wait for him. 